Hey guys, this is Brian. Now I know you're probably expecting our intro music to start playing and one of us three guys to go, oh, today's date is August 30th of 2022 and so on and so forth. And believe me, we'll get to that in a minute. But first, I wanted to give this special little intro real quick. It'll just be a short one, but I just wanted to, to give a, 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 some thanks to a few people that have been instrumental in making this podcast possible. Um, we are... I'm I'm doing this now because we're entering, and as we mentioned later on, we're entering, this is our episode 10, we're entering our final three episodes of the year, and when we originally um, set out to do this, we were going to do one year, 12 episodes, maybe a few videos, and, you know, see where it goes from there. And as as far as I'm aware, we're still going to keep going, we're going to do another year at least, make 12 more episodes, and make many more videos. But we are coming up on the end of our first year, and it's been an amazing year with this podcast. And so I wanted to give a, and I'll, I'll give a more, a de- more detailed one, on our final episode of the year. But for now, since we're entering our top three or our final three, I wanted to do with this special intro just to give out shout outs to some people. Um, first and foremost, um, the people who make this thing run are the, the boys, uh, David and Jake. Now, I can say whatever I want to here because I'm the sole editor, and even though Jake knows I'm doing a special intro, I told him he's not allowed to listen to it, obviously, f- until it com- until we come back to this in 2041. David has no idea what I'm doing at all. Because I'm the editor, I can do whatever I want with this, and, and they'll never know, unless, of course, somebody tells them. So please, if you know us personally, don't tell Jake or David what I'm going to say here. But for, I, I do want to thank both of them for wanting to do this podcast with me. I, I, I had an idea of doing a podcast uh, about a year, a little over a year ago, but I wasn't sure what the podcast wanted to be, like what I wanted to do with it. I just wanted to do a podcast. And once I got, you know, David was totally on board with it. He was like the first one. He's like, yes, I want to do a podcast. Let, let me know what we're doing. And I and then I asked Jake, and Jake had some great ideas for a podcast. He eventually talk to his dad who actually i'll get to him in a minute and his dad threw out this idea of doing a time capsule podcast and so and and the i mean i i've loved every minute of it it's been frustrating and stressful for sure especially during this editing process but i've loved doing this podcast it's honestly honestly been so fun for me and i cannot thank both of those guys enough david has been one of my best friends for years um, I mean, they, I love him so much. I love him like a brother. I, I can't really can't express how much how much he means to me. I mean, I, I've been him and I have been through so much together, and and I really can't express that. Jake, he's also been one of my best friends for a long time. So, I mean, we grew up together almost. I mean, he's been you know he's a couple of years older than me, two or three years older than me. So I mean, he was a, always a couple grades ahead, but um. We grew up together all, and spent a lot of time together. And as much as we argue both in and outside of the recording studio, Jake, I do care about you a lot, man. You're, you're like you're like a brother to me. All right. As much as we have as much as we have our differences and we argue a lot, you do mean a lot to me. And I and I cannot thank you enough for wanting to do this podcast, and especially handling the YouTube side of it and doing all the video editing that we need. You mean so much to me and to this podcast without this without you guys honestly this obviously this podcast would not exist i couldn't do it on my own i this type of podcast i couldn't do on my own and without you two here it wouldn't be possible so thank you guys for doing this with me the other person i want to thank today is jake's dad um bob bob has been a teacher and a mentor to me since before middle school before you know and bob i know i know you'll get this but before the mad taco days i mean especially in the mad taco days uh back when that was actually a class <laughs> um you have been there for me through so much you have taught me so much you have been a man that i have always aspired to be and and i love you you've you've almost been like a second father to me you honestly you really have i uh, and i can't uh, you have been he's You've been the biggest, or, or you've been our most consistent listener. You've been the most, you know, cr- critical of our of our podcast, letting us know what's working, what's not. 
um, we, some of the suggestions that, you know, Jake has told me that you, you've given us, we have implemented, it actually has made the podcast better, especially in the early episodes, like the first five, the first three or four episodes, we, I, I took a lot of your input to heart and made our podcast way better than it used to be. So thank you so much for everything you do, both just for me personally, for, for all of us guys and for the podcast. With that being said, thank you guys for listening to every single episode so far. If you have, if you haven't, I highly encourage you to go back and listen, even though they're so cringy, the first few episodes do give you a little bit of an introduction as to who we are. Um, especially episode one, you get to know us a little bit better again, super cringy, but if you would, you know, go back and listen to those, I would highly appreciate it. Now, with all of that out of the way, a little bit longer than I was expecting, let's get into today's episode, episode 10. Cue the pre-recorded intro. The current date is August 31st, 2022. Welcome to the Time Capsule Podcast, where we'll be looking into the future, discussing the present, and reminiscing about the past. By the time that we, your hosts, revisit these episodes, we may be married, we may even have some kids, or may even live in a big mansion. Who knows? Anything could happen between now and then. The point is that we won't be coming back to these episodes for at least 20 years. You, however, sitting there listening to these episodes can revisit any time you like. Let us begin. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a very special episode of the Time Capsule Podcast. For very for multiple reasons. First of all, we are officially in the double digits now. That's right. It's episode number ten. Little little round of applause there. Epic celebration. Thank you all for hanging with us this long. We appreciate all you loyal listeners out there. And for the first time ever in Time Capsule Podcast history, we have a guest. My cousin Sebastian, welcome to the show, Seb. Yay. Oh, thank glad you so you. much for having me. So excited the, to be here. Uh, I'm glad time. you're here, man. We, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah. I'm yeah. very excited. Yeah, you want to maybe tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as Jake said, I'm his cousin. I'm uh, just a wee year older than him. Uh, I'm <laughs> currently a student pharmacist, finishing my third year at my pharmacy school. For the sake of anonymity, I suppose I shouldn't say it, but... Yeah, you fine. don't have to say yeah. anything you don't want to. Pretty much it, yeah. I just work, play video games, and go to school. That is the life. So Indeed. That's us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, any any message for your future self in 20 years? Yeah, uh, get that bag, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Absolutely. get this bread. All right. Um, well... Any any other small talk we got for you today? I'd like to bring up a quick thing. So between now and our last recording session, our last episode, um, it was announced that the Choco Taco was being conti- discontinued. A terrible, terrible tragedy. Rest what? in peace, yep. Choco Taco. Well, that's that's a shame. Indeed. Say goodbye to the legend. Uh, I. <laughs> you really want to play taps? Anybody play trumpet? <laughs> <laughs> I can put that in the background. Right, over here. <laughs> uh, edit that out. <laughs> no, in post, I'll put taps in the background. Yeah, there you go. Fix it in post. Love it. <laughs> uh, David, Brian, you got any small talk you want to discuss? Uh, well, I mean, I'm currently dating somebody now. Hey. It's going Let's go. really, really well. Nice. Um, so it's officially yeah, official. It's- Yep. Yes and no. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, it is. <laughs> I'm married, so still by try- the way. <laughs> Just throwing still- that out there. Congratulations. Oh, well, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, we're still trying to convince her brother that it's a good idea, but... <laughs> uh, is, is it an older brother or a younger brother? <laughs> well, it's Zach, actually. Zach Salazar. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bit weird, but... I mean... Okay, all right. <laughs> Brian, uh, oh, edit out that last just, name. <laughs> just tell him that it's me, Brian. It's okay. It- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been there and done that, and I'm no, no, I'm good. Uh, I'm, I'm good with that one. Thanks, but no thanks. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> in oh, recent n- in recent news in my life today marks the official beginning of the school year i had my first day of senior year today so woohoo Ooh. or something oh yeah excellent yeah yeah have that I'm senior right yet? Yet? you're senior now no. harry <laughs> i'm actually very excited for my classes i'm taking a bunch of cool stuff like ib astronomy i've got Ooh. uh Ooh. environmental yeah. ed where i just get to like take care of animals and go outside and learn a bunch of stuff hands-on it's awesome that actually sounds super fun yeah taking... awesome astronomy so... are you a capricorn uh no <laughs> just kidding actually that's, I'm that's astrology i'm, I'm that was a joke <laughs> and uh and speaking of uh astrology astro- astro- uh, space stuff um, <laughs> <laughs> tonight hey, i am going we'll cut that don't worry tonight is the uh peak of the uh Perside's meteor shower, which I will. Oh be yeah, we're going to watch that. I'm going to t- uh, do a little bleep right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to redacted. Okay. Bleep Kansas. <laughs> yeah, somewhere in Kansas is where I'm okay. headed. But yeah, I'm probably right. excited. And I also, for you loyal listeners that can't see what's going on, I broke my thumb like two weeks ago. I had a little bit of a, a motorized scooter accident on a street where I live. And it was bad enough for me to break something. That is unfortunate. But I'm alive. Real unfortunate. But your bones are back together, right? They're getting there. They will be. Eventually. Good, good, good. And yeah, that's kind of all the stuff. Good, Anakin. All right. Good to hear. Good to hear. Did you guys. What? I said that was a short recap. (laughs) Well, I was going to ask did you guys hear about the, like, attack on the FBI office in Ohio? No. There was an it, attack on the FBI office? Uh, no. Yeah, like, days ago at this point. So, like, this guy showed up in uh, body armor, and he had... Um, How do you fit he in had that a, bottle? He had an AR-style rifle and uh, a, a nail gun. And he started a He started gun? with a nail gun. I think he was trying to break the... Uh, according to some sources, it, it, it's theorized that he was going to use that to break the glass. And then huh. um, start firing. And, like, they chase think? him... And uh, they ran him off the so road weird. on the highway and shot him dead. Oh, okay, hmm. all right. That yeah. solves that problem, I suppose. Yeah. And I think I think it is had it a to problem do... though? Is it really a problem? Yes. The FBI gets shot up. <laughs> well, it depends on how you feel about the FBI, and I'm I'm yeah, fairly it's certain it's connected to the the raid on Trump's uh, Mar-a-Lago. For the FBI. Oh yeah, almost certainly right. It might the not FBI be a FBI is doing a lot of dirty work lately. It might not they, be a problem for don't. us, but for the FBI, that is a problem for them. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> listen, man, I know a guy in the a FBI. Nail gun. I. So do I. His name is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the nail. His gun address is Walter Hartwell <laughs> White. Just me. His bank account number. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. This, this is very reminiscent of our first episode where we we did that whole bit with the credit card. Yeah. Oh. The legend has it that Trump was hiding nuclear secrets in his home at Mar-a-Lago. That is why they raided, yeah. Yeah. See if they find anything. Or slash found anything, I suppose. It's mm-hmm. so weird. It's what a weird world we live in. Yeah. Am I allowed to get into politics here or no? Uh, um, I think that's about as close as we should ever get, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Okay, that's fine. With that that's being fine. said, let's get right into today's uh, subject that is... Uh, Tales from the Workplace. Mm. So, oh my. Uh, Tales from, from the retail. Workplace. Yeah, as yes. the, the most youthful of our group, <laughs> with the least amount of years under their belt, David, why don't you start <laughs> us off? I would be happy to. In yeah, terms of... The fewest stories. In terms of work experience, I don't have much, but I have enough. I. In terms of experience, we have no experience. <laughs> in terms of experience, we have no experience. When, uh, experience. A couple years... None. A couple years ago, and I mean like five years ago, maybe something like that. I actually, <laughs> <laughs> by a couple, I mean five or something. <laughs> I actually started my own lawn mowing business and had a decent number of yards that me and my father would go mow. And ah, there would the be, classic. There would be uh, many a time that something would go awry or wrong. Um, I felt really bad one time i accidentally ran over a garter snake and um, 
coincidentally Ooh. ended its life. <laughs> Ooh. I'm going to be honest, I don't think that's a coincidence. I was like... Yeah. I felt it so bad. So like if you're running anything hit over with, with a mower, you quickly might. spinning blade. I was yeah. like, Dad, it's dead. And he was like, okay, keep mowing. I don't care. He's like, and? I never really had it's to deal with anything. Of life, son. I never really hard. had to, to deal with anything in that work setting, though. It was when I started working with my pal, Brian, that you guys may or may not <laughs> yeah. know. I joined him <laughs> uh, at a mighty place called Price Chopper. Mm, and oh. that place uh. was full of some of the weirdest characters i'll ever meet in my entire life was it welcome fresh? to retail it was fresh retail is we did we did work at retail it was bad it was amazing there was <laughs> let's see one time i was stalking the soda aisle when this little old lady came up to me and asked me for help and i was like yeah absolutely let me run in the back and see if i can find it stay right here don't go anywhere i run to the back I, <laughs> I run to the back. <laughs> Don't die. I, I look around and I like, I can't find it. You know, that's that. I just go up to her and I'm like, hey, you can't find it. So I walk back outside and she's not there anymore. And I like. I said, she's 100% gone. I went no within. Way. Ghost. I went with it. That's exactly like I yeah. I walked up to our, our manager or I guess he was. Yeah, he was one of the managers. I walked up to him and I was like, this lady just disappeared. I, I swear I saw a ghost. And he was like. Well, you know, it wouldn't be the first time. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it wouldn't. I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, oh, a couple of us have, are pretty sure we've seen just a ghost person walk in and ask for help and then disappear. But then I found her like 10 aisles down later. Like, I couldn't find your soda. I don't know why you disappeared, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. She looked at you and went, what Goodbye. soda? Yeah. What are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I've never seen you before in my life. And then been... um, when I moved up to being... Okay, first of all, before I get there, I want to rant about something that I absolutely hated. <laughs> I was... When I signed on to the job, first of all, in my interview, when they asked, why do you want to work here? Instead of giving some intellectual, like, I'd really like to become a member of the working class and improve my skills. I just looked at the lady that was interviewing me and I said, mm, money. <laughs> Yeah. She was like she was like, Alright. I like money. Yeah. Um I was originally supposed to be a sacker, but because there were so many at the front and my sister was working at the front at the time, they were like, eh, we don't really want to cause problems, so we're gonna move you in the back where you'll still be making where you'll be actually making more than a sacker would make. And I was like, Okay, oh. perfect, that's fine. Nice. So I worked nice. in the back yeah. for a long time and then eventually You're welcome, by the way. That was my recommendation. That was your thank you. It was actually a great experience. Unloading the opposite of getting sacked. <laughs> the only thing that sucked was there'd be times where I had to unload, like, f five pallets from a truck that were, like, two times as tall as me all by myself. Just had to scan it in and put it on carts. Mm. And then put those carts away all by myself. So, um, it was a time. And through some weird series of events, I started working in the dairy section. And the, the mm. guy that was working in the dairy section, was he the manager Brian? No, we so we didn't have a dairy manager because the last dairy manager we had got fired for stealing carts full of groceries. <laughs> He's so stealing they, they, carts of groceries? Yeah, he would every day he would just walk out with a cart of groceries. Wow. And we're like and, oh. and only one person saw it, but since oh, she yeah, was I totally also taking these. Since the she was also stealing groceries, she didn't say anything. Oh, so he got fired for it. And uh. instead of hiring instead of hiring a new manager for the dairy department, they just Start. They just took one of the stalkers and just was like, "Here, you do dairy," and then they put David back there. I was like, "Here, you listen to him. He knows what he's doing back in dairy." So we didn't actually have a dairy manager. It, it was, was just whatever stalkers were available. It, it was this old man who was probably like seventy years old or something. I don't know, and he was just a jerk to me good, and good everyone old Abe. for no reason <laughs> at all. I'd be like, I like just started working there and like didn't know where anything in the dairy was. I was like, Abe, I don't know where this goes. And he was like, well, you should figure that out yourself. And I was like, great. You <laughs> awesome. should pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And <laughs> yeah, dude, for Abe, real. Abe was an absolute butthead to work with. There was one time our store director told me to have somebody go put some stuff back. And he said, grab a stalker if you have to, because I didn't have anybody up front. So I pulled David and said, here, go put these back. And while he's doing go backs, 
Abe comes up and oh yells at me. He's like, you he's like, you should have told me that you were taking him. I'm like, dude, I, the store director told me. Go ask him. Like, I just grabbed a stalker. Don't get mad at me. And he, like, walked up and started slamming doors as he's walking out. I'm uh, like, dude, you got issues. He was crazy. I guarantee it. And, and he was lazy and never ordered what he was supposed to order. Mm. I could have done it better, just saying. Yeah, you could have. <laughs> I was like, very... David, how did you get to be the, the head of the dairy department? Crime. <laughs> I, was a, yeah. I was a very hard worker, and that will, we'll loop back to that at the end of my work tales here. But, um, so yeah, I worked in the dairy for a while. I had this one dude come up to me and was like, where's so-and-so? And keep in mind, this is like month two of me working at this price chopper, so I'm like, I'm really sorry, like, I don't know where this is. I'm going to have to go ask someone. And he's like, you know, I used to work at a grocery store, and I worked in the dairy department. You should really know this place better. I, like, grabbed my shirt. Oh, that's my, my favorite. I grabbed my shirt where my <laughs> trainer badge was and practically shoved it in his face and was like, I just started working here! <laughs> and, oh, man, <laughs> it was not a good day after that, let me tell you. The amount of times I hear people go, no, that's not right. And I'm like, yes, it is. I know what I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I, and don't then, tell like, me I'm wrong. Don't like, tell me I should do my job better. You six months down me. the line, he like came back in and asked me for something, and I like didn't even look at him. And I was like, "It's right over there by the Velveeta cheese, which you won't see because it's on a stupid little cart." He was like, "Okay." Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, customers, dang. retail customers are the worst because they will tell you how to do your job and be like, "I worked in retail for fifty some years." Like, okay, but you didn't work at this store <laughs> yeah. at this specific time, so shut up. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> After Did you ever get stuff thrown at you? Either of you? Yes. Uh, I have had I have had loaves of bread thrown at me. <laughs> I've had moldy strawberries uh, thrown at me. I've never had anything thrown at me at the pharmacy. <laughs> Pharmacists Just because have you have something easy, people want. Actually. My pills aren't working. <laughs> yes, because yeah, they'll die if they don't. I have heard people. that. I have heard that. My pills oh. don't work. Can you tell me why? Do you take them? Do you take them one time every day? No. Okay, well, well that's, that's probably like why they're not working. It's like that one, I don't remember what it was from. It was, a, it was a clip from some show, and it's this lady at the doctor. She's like, my inhaler's not working. And he's like, oh, my gosh. Are you, yeah, he's I know like, exactly are, what you're are talking you, about. He's like, are you using it correctly? And she's like, do I look like an idiot? And he was like, no, ma'am. But let's see you use your, your inhaler. She pulls it out. And she's like, I have to buy a new one. Like, I have to buy two new ones every month. I go through them so fast. It's not working. She pulls it out and goes kh, kh, on her oh, neck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's like, like spraying oh, perfume. Yeah. yeah. The doctor's just like, yep. Absolutely. <laughs> yep, an idiot. <laughs> there are That happens way more often than you would think it should. <laughs> I have people who like spray it in front of their face. And then, like, try and breathe it in before it all diffuses away in the atmosphere. <laughs> As an asthmatic myself who uses an inhaler regularly, I can't imagine going, <sighs> I yeah, gotta collect it before it disappears. I was, I was in a similar situation. They're like, man, I just feel like I've been having to use my inhaler more often. And that's the first thing you ask is, like, can you show me how you're using your inhaler? And, like, uh... seven out of ten times they're not using it right. I it's not that, that hard. I learned how Man, to use I feel one like when that's I was a like recurring six. enough trope. I'm gonna have so many stories about dumb customers today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah. After, you better believe it, sir. After bouncing from nearly every department in that store, I can say that the most stupid people that I had to deal with was definitely as a cashier. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. You hit when, everybody as a cashier. Yes. Yeah. Most they're getting likely. food, they're going through you, man. This isn't necessarily anything, a bad man. thing, but it was like hour seven of my eight hour shift and I'm like done with life at this point. Dude comes through my line, just the happiest go luckiest dude. Looks at me and is like, Working hard or hardly working. I, I looked at him <laughs> and I have never went ha louder in my entire life and then just straight face started scanning his groceries. Just the most fake laugh. <laughs> ha Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> It was so loud, too. I actually kind of felt bad. I was like, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. I looked at him. I went, ha! And then just, Dude, that's when you pull out a paintball beep, gun. Beep, beep. Your voice clipped out in real life. <laughs> yeah, that's <was> funny. <laughs> exactly. My wavelength takes up the entire, like, box where la Dude, wavelengths I'm gonna go. Dude, I'm going to have to quiet that down so people aren't getting their ear drums blasted. <laughs> <laughs> you, can just, yeah. you can just censor it and be, like, very loud, ha, or something. I don't know. Voice it, voice it over. <laughs> 
Like, hey guys, this is, is Brian. This... After the fact, uh, David broke his microphone doing that laugh. So uh, it is at know. this point in time that David blew our eardrums out. I had people come through my line that didn't understand how just normal sales worked. How like three for like ten bucks on Coke products work? They'd come in with like Pepsi's and they'd be like, "Why isn't the Coca Cola sale working?" Be like, oh, I don't know, ma'am. On. Look at the kind of soda that you have. Because have, Pepsi is but, the inferior soft drink. Yeah, no, but the thing is, the most annoying thing is that that people, when customers didn't get what they wanted, they would put it back on the wrong shelf, mm-hmm. and then other <laughs> oh, customers yeah. would come along, see that, grab it, and assume uh, that's part of the sale. It's like, no, read the freaking sign. <laughs> but regardless of um, annoying customers, I, I worked very hard. I was probably one of the best workers they had at that store you were I'm, you were I'm by proud far. i'm proud to admit that if the managers ever asked me to Biased. do anything i <laughs> well, i mean i was one of his managers if, I mean, if the managers really hard. if the managers ever asked me to do anything i was like on top of it right away with like super good efficiency and like you know i usually was fairly close in the ballpark there would be times i think at, at 16 years old, or however old I was at the time, they were like, all right, David, we need you to come in at, like, 6 o'clock in the morning. You're going to start training cashiers. I was like, what? Like, do I get extra pay for this? Because I'll be down if I do. I didn't. Um, that and Yeah, they, they, were, they were terrible with Which pay. eventually they led into, to my resignation because I was called into the office by – the store director and he sat me down and he was like david i like what you're doing here you're a really hard worker i admire your work ethic he, you know he kind of went on about how i'm like one of the best workers they have and then he's like and i'm not saying this lightly because i don't do this often but i'm gonna give you a raise and i, I looked at him and i was like okay and in my in my head i'm like yes finally <laughs> after a year of working here i'm getting a raise he looked at me and he said you're gonna be going from making ten dollars an hour to ten fifty and i just I gritted my teeth, I smiled, I shook his hand, I said, thank you, sir. I went home and I typed out my two weeks notice on my computer. <laughs> was that Jason? Oof. No, that was Brett. That was Brett? Yeah, that was oh, Brett. That surprises me. So the store director, almost... is that like the only person that's above them is the owner? Uh, it, yeah, it's corporate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah corporate. store director is the guy who runs the whole store. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, the most they could, do, the most they were allowed to give out at, in store as a raise at one time was fifty cents. If it was anything more than that, they had to go up to corporate. Could have gone that was yeah, corporate. Okay. That was well. The thing is, that's a long process, and corporate doesn't want to pay you anymore. Why don't you just give me like two fifty cent raises? Because you can only get a fifty <laughs> cent. You can only get a fifty cent frame, raise. Sure. Yeah, it's like a fifty cent raise every six months or something. No, absolutely, Ab- absolutely not. After I heard that, I was like. It was a pleasure working with you. <laughs> Dude, I felt so bad because I posted the day before I turned in my two weeks notice. I posted on on Snapchat like, hey, I just got a job at Honda. I'm still looking forward to this. And one of my one of the assistant managers at that time saw it and then told my store director. So I came the next day and he had already known that I was going to do it. So when I walked up to him and had the piece of paper, he's like, yeah, I knew this was coming. I was like, great. That, that's <laughs> and like brett is such a nice guy like he's one of the nicest guys I've ever he was met. really one of the, nice my, my favorite store director of all time out of the, out of my four years there i went through five store directors and he was the best one i'd ever had oh wow as someone and, who went through three yes <laughs> yeah and he was turnover. he was he was very good <laughs> with well it that store is the training store for the company for managers so oh, they'd really? bring in a store director, yeah. give them, yeah, they would like give them a year, six months to a year, then ship them off to another store or demote them or whatever, or fire that them, do whatever. That makes way more sense. Yeah. So yeah, in my, out. in my, in my four years, I went through four office managers and five store directors. And, um, oh, wow. Yeah. No, Brett was the nicest guy. So it, it, seeing the look of disappointment on his face was so hard for me because I was yeah. like, he's, that guy has never wronged me at all. I was like, this isn't, this isn't about you. I was like, I just, I need to move on from this place. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I did feel Gotta real get bad. get right out of here. <laughs> I did feel real bad when I turned in my resignation because I think I gave it to Angie and she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was really happy yeah. though. On my last day at the end of my shift, I walked up to customer t- service. I took off my name tag. I slammed it on the ground and I said, I quit. And I walked out of the store. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Brian just it. held up David's name tag. <laughs> <laughs> it, it says in training because I lost my official one. So they were just like, here's a training tag. So I had like a, 
a training tag for like the basically like eight months I worked like for eight of the year I worked there it was like training tag <laughs> and then whenever I would like make a mistake yeah. even though I was working there for a year I'd be like oh I'm sorry ma'am I'm in I'm in training I, I you know I don't so quite know what I'm sense. doing yet <laughs> I lost that ability once I got to customer service it makes sense <laughs> yeah no so uh, my last yeah. day my last day we had two managers three cashiers me and the other office person and then two sackers and as as I called up my manager. I was like, "Yeah, hey, it's time for me to turn in my keys. Like, I'm leaving." And I got I got a hug from him, my other manager. Then all the cashiers and sackers are giving me like a standing ovation because I'd been there for so long. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I was their like favorite office person. I was like, "Oh, thank you guys. You're making me miss you already." <laughs> yep. Wow. And that that uh, pretty much sums up my work experience. I don't think I ever really made any <clears throat> major mistakes. I'm trying to think back to like I think the worst thing I did was like I hit a shelf with a with a pallet jack or something I don't know. <laughs> no no Actually, workplace it's injuries. Fu- it's funny no. that you mentioned that. Hmm. It's funny that you mentioned hitting a shelf because I and I told Jake this before but I I don't I don't think you know about this David, but do you do you remember Vig? Yes. Yeah, okay. So Vig, he's like one of the He's the director of store operations up in corporate. So, I mean, he he runs everything in all the stores, and he owns, like, a couple of them. It's real scary when he walks up to the store. He is. He's, like, he can either be the nicest guy you've ever met or the scariest guy you've ever met. Well, more, often than not, more often than not, it was the latter. And you could always tell how his day was going if he was in a bad mood by how he was limping, like, how bad he was limping. And it was really difficult to tell, like, okay, do I approach him or do I just stay away from him? Because he could, I mean, he was one of those guys with the power to, like, oh, you didn't smile at me? You're fired. And, like, ask, they'll walk you out the door. I mean, he well, had that's that the, kind that's of power. the owner power play right there. And yeah, so, done. and they, they actually have, have done that a couple times. Not for that reason, but just it's on the like, spot. All right, you're, yeah, you're out. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. Yep. And um, there was one day he got he got ticked off. Like real I don't remember what happened, but he got really, really ticked off. Ended up driving our forklift through a wall in the back room. Wow. Like he just straight up throat <laughs> drove it through the wall. And we're like, like I, Yeah. Uh, I mean he owns the funny. store, so he could do whatever he wants to, but yeah. like, dude, like what's a big the heck? wow. It's a big uh, check to cut though. Yeah, I mean, it was like we were like, oh, "This guy's pissed. Like, don't don't mess with him today." <laughs> oh no, that was a load bearing walk. <laughs> I wish. Uh, I I think that my, my scariest moment with him was when he came up to me because they are when they are remodeling or rearranging. They didn't remodel; they just rearranged everything, and they had me write or draw a couple of numbers for the signs because they didn't have the foam ones at the time. And I did one and gave it to him. And then he comes back like half an hour later and he goes, okay, where's my seven? And I was like, you're what? It's like, I told you to, I, he's like, I told you an hour ago to write, to draw me a seven. And I was like, I, I don't remember you telling me to do I that. I'm like, I, I don't have a seven. I was like, I was like, I was panicking, which is weird. Cause he liked me actually, as far as I'm aware, he really liked me. He always, he always did what he could to help me out, which is great. But like, I was like panicking at that moment because like i crap he told me to do something i didn't do it i'm in so much trouble yeah, right he now he licked his lips and cracked his knuckles. he's like yeah this is what i've been waiting for well yeah, do, okay boy. get this so yeah. he's he's a he's a big italian dude and he's like <laughs> five foot five foot six maybe so he's short oh, okay. but he's big <laughs> yeah. and he is like he has a very um what's the right word his demeanor is just very overpowering and so it's like it's I'll difficult make you to, an to offer you can't mm-hmm. refuse. I mean, pretty much turn around, I mean, like it'd be a crime. We we used to joke whenever he was in the store with like a new with a, like a new or a new manager in orientation. He's like we used to we used to joke about like he's probably standing back there next to that manager going, "Hey, look, watch watch how everything I say. These these guys will just run like crazy to do what I say." He's like, "Watch this, watch this," and he'll like tell us to do the most dumb crap and just watch us <laughs> run back and forth trying to get it done. <laughs> I think in my time working at Price Chopper, the least, my least favorite thing that I ever had to did is one, ever had to do, pardon me, <laughs> that I ever had to did was one time, no, um, <laughs> my manager brought me into the, the, my manager brought me into the back room and he, no, <laughs> he took me to the produce <laughs> section in the back and pointed to all of the mop buckets and said, I know this is going to suck, but I need you to clean these. 
each and every one, the inside was just black with mold. Their yellow mop heads, oh, the oh, inside sure. was black. Oh, they were no. bad. And I was like, I looked at him and I said, can I listen to music? And he was like, just get it done. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Did they give you PPE? Uh, no. no. That's illegal. Well, sure. they actually made him lick the inside. It was really weird. <laughs> um, no, that because that, what drove me nuts about those is those are technically produce buckets, mm-hmm. but everybody oh. in the store used them. And then, and then whenever they didn't get cleaned, produce would always blame the sackers for not cleaning them. Like, first of all, they're your buckets. You should be cleaning them every day, anyways. It's part of your job. Yeah. Second of all, the sackers are not the only people who use these. And even if they were, you don't come up there and yell at them when it like you talk to me about possibly sending one back there to clean it if you're not going to do it yourself you mean like you carry the produce in them no 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 they're they're, just... they're mop buckets they're they're just they're for oh, produce oh, mop to use in the my bad. sorry yes mop buckets Ugh. i apologize yeah. Yeah, he probably no. said that earlier but all i heard was buckets i did say mop buckets it's, it's fine okay don't worry about that's it. on me yeah and uh, brian my... edit that out <laughs> <laughs> no leave my... that on yeah, i'm gonna leave it in. it's fine <laughs> My favorite thing that I did at that store, though, was Instacart orders because I just got to run around the store with a shopping cart, pick stuff up, scan it, throw it in the cart, and just go check it out, put it in some bags, call it good. It was awesome. Nice. And uh, so you, you it's use been a about, special scanner? Uh, yeah, there was a, yeah. There's a phone app that you just ah. you know, tag it and then... Oh, I don't... Did we have the actual <laughs> special guns by, by the time you left, or did we get those after you left? For what exactly for actually scanning stuff okay yeah so we we stopped doing instacart and we went to price chopper had their own delivery si- or own grocery shopping system then and so they gave us special guns that had like it would send the order directly to the gun whenever somebody would send it in and you would you'd accept it and then you'd use that gun to scan all the items and they they pay for it in advance so then whenever you scan all the items it just prints off a receipt from that and you st- you put that on the bags. So you just scan it as you're shopping, and then put it into bags at the front. That's and you just so swap nice. It yeah, that's similar yeah. to how Walmart does it too. Dang it, dude. <laughs> hmm. Yep. Uh, hello. Here we are bleeding out the price chopper secrets. But that is <laughs> the code to the safe. Is that is my <laughs> my work experience. I'm gonna shut up now. Take it away, gentlemen. Oh, what about that time when you worked for a week at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, he was fired for bad smells. You don't want to know. Order. Yeah, <laughs> tampering with the animatronics. It was. He uh, lost a bit of his frontal lobe. It was crazy. <laughs> the frontal lobe. Oh my. Actually, I did one time, uh, help cater for a wedding. Because my sister, the the our neighbors across the street from us own their own catering business, and my sister worked for uh. them, and they were like, they were like, we need help david come help us cater so i was like okay i dressed up all fancy i got to bus tables at this catholic wedding and the funniest thing that happened was i walked up to this dude that his plate the all his utensils were on the plate and all that was left was like some sauce in the corner and i like start (laughs) i start picking up his plate and he like holds out his hand he's like i'm not done with that and i'm like okay i don't know (laughs) what you're about to do to this plate but i mean have at it gonna lick it clean listen man there are certain sauces that where that is a-okay to do because (laughs) they're that good it was a it was a fun night yep jake tell us about amazon actually um, well the thing about amazon is that that's gonna really gonna have to wait because i'm legally not allowed to discuss it Uh, you have an nda uh i can neither conform nor deny confirm nor deny good sir wow really Really? yeah brian you may even have to edit this part out <laughs> yeah we'll but, cut uh, that just why? To say. that's why uh, i'll just i'll oh, that's fine what a, i what can a, i can talk about my other places of work what a high falut- what a high falutin boy huh uh, don't worry no, i'll be glad to leak just... all, every secret after after i, I can <laughs> actually do so <laughs> I have to wait. Yeah, though. tell tell us about all the police body cam footage you watch all day. 
Uh, well, I don't want to. Yeah, because that's any better. I was gonna say I don't really want to talk about that either because they're my current employer, and I I really don't want to screw things up. Yeah, so yeah. Jake really can't talk about his work history. We're just gonna skip past him. Go well, listen, listen, past listen. Time. No, I have plenty of stories, but the thing is, like most workplaces, like, I mean, Kansas is an at will state, so they're they're hiring me at will. They could literally decide at any time and for any reason to stop being my employer, and that, that's true. Frankly, that sucks, and they don't even have to give me any notice either. I didn't know Kansas was a right to work state. Yeah, that's interesting. Yep, it is. It is. Unfortunately, shouldn't be legal. Frankly, uh, anyway, <laughs> my very first job was at a entertainment center known as slash Freddy arcade. Fazbear's Pizzeria. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It was the Pizza Plex. It was a much bigger operation. Uh, no, my kidding. bad. Uh, no, it's not well. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be real with you here. The the scale of of operation that we see in security breach is absolutely massive. Like that's on pretty much on the level of like Disney World. Just yeah, how yeah, huge really the is. facility <laughs> is and, and all the like background crap. Disney World slash Mall of America. Yeah, I've never worked yeah. anything that big, but I did work at um, I basically like a smaller scale Dave and Busters is mm. what it was. It was a place Power called Play. Power Play and. Well, there oh, is still classic. a location open here in Kansas. The one at which I work is no longer open. They closed their doors in uh, 2019, I think. Saddest day. Uh, really? Yep. It's that recent? I thought it would closed a way longer ago. No. Than that. no. Nope, it was only a few years. It was like right before COVID hit. I like, was so upset. But not yeah, 2020. Yeah, I... I... I remember that day because you were like, "Hey, they're like they're closing tomorrow. Do you want to do you want to go out and like spend one last hurrah there?" Yeah, because before I ever worked there, uh, and you know, in my childhood, I visited there uh, quite a few times, a lot, most of which were with the youth group. Uh, anyway, yep. uh, they are now incredible pizza, mm-hmm. and the layout has changed drastically, but there are still some things that are the same. I mean, recently made a visit there to see what all had was different, and uh, it's quite a bit. But you, know, uh, you can still I wondered, see. I wondered why that incredible pizza looks so familiar. <laughs> yeah, you can still see <laughs> echoes of the old uh, location. Uh, there's a yellow animatronic suit in the back room. Uh, did somebody <laughs> use it to lure five kids back. Th- okay, all right, we got to stop referencing that game. That reminds me. <laughs> Starting uh, to smell funny. <laughs> just, just as a, a quick little thing, when you said you can kind of still see the the remnants, there was a a blockbuster just down the street from my house that I went to a lot oh, as, yeah. a, as a, as a young And when they closed down, it turned into something else, but like the big, like ticket stub sign was still on the front of it. And every time I mm. drove oh. past it, I was like, <gasps> do you can still see those like remnants of those signs everywhere? Yeah. yeah. You guys know the, remember the old Sears slash Kmart off of Shawnee mission parkway. Oh boy. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. the Kmart sign is still up. It's just really faded. Yeah. Ah, uh, rest in peace. The one, uh, the one that's behind the red lobster i think what? is that general yeah. area mm-hmm. yeah. yeah 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 i was talking about it's by krispy kreme but yeah i was yeah. gonna say it's by krispy kreme yeah and red lobster yeah there's a red lobster oh, a red lobster is there yeah. really yes. there is yeah i'm i'm with you thank I'm you Seb. You. I appreciate, yeah, it, it's, I appreciate it's, it's real it's definitely there okay okay i'm gonna look it up later <laughs> You would think, since I yeah. live the closest to that area out of all four of us, I yeah. would have known that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, just, like I've, let's just let's um, just <laughs> let's just move on from that and, and pretend that never happened. Uh, Brian, edit that out. <laughs> I'm not editing that out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know we're gonna scrap this whole episode. Yeah, we're gonna have a two minute <laughs> no, wait, podcast. Uh, my efforts. Yeah. I'm at 40 minutes now. <laughs> this whole this whole podcast is just going to be each one of us going, I worked. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's sick. Right. That's, All right. that's the episode. Be sure to rate no, and subscribe. Okay. All right. Allow me to, to get into my, my stories. Bad. So this first one is more of a prelude, honestly, to the, to the second one. Um, so basically, at, at Power Play, there are multiple different positions you could be put on. Like, you're... you're if you were hired on to work on the floor, you you were just given the umbrella title of floor associate. But you could be, they could put you on the go karts or the laser tag or, or the kids zone, or or if you were old enough, they'd put you behind the bar, mm. or to, into work bowling. It it really just you know you had to get trained there, and then they they'd put you there. Uh, the only thing I I never did was um, I never worked behind the front desk. Only only girls were, or if you were a guy and you were a manager. You were allowed to work back there because the owner was a sexist. <laughs> so, uh, say, and he also why. never allowed girls, except for very rare occasions, to work with go karts. That's kind of weird. Because, well, I mean, mm-hmm. girls can't drive, so. Whoa, yeah. whoa, okay, all right. 
<laughs> it's uh, a joke, Jake. It's a joke. Calm down. The views bum, of bum, Bitcoin bum, Turtle uh, do not necessarily match those of Brian. <laughs> okay. What do you mean? I am this company. <laughs> Hold on. Time out. No, okay. So most of the time, I was working the laser tag arena. I would have the white ref referee vest, and um, I'd be the one telling you the rules and then running the game. And if your vest turned off, I would put it, turn it back on so you could keep playing. And uh, so what's important to note is that the laser tag system we used uh, was Laser Force, and it was run on a PC that was running Windows 7. Yeah. And, well, there are definitely, like, built-in features that allow you to lock down most of the operating system and even lock focus into a, a program window. Mm-hmm. The uh, owner, neither the owner nor the tech guy, had taken the steps to do that. So you could easily minimize the Laser Force like system terminal window and just mess about in the rest of the operating system now they had taken steps to conceal the internet browser but uh i just brought in a thumb drive with a copy of google chrome on it <laughs> okay <laughs> i hid right. it in like three subfolders down like down it. deep within the depths of the hard drive and um wow i went in and i downloaded a bunch of like tech music that i felt fit the vibe of lazy tag and i changed it because Frankly, I felt that the the music that was already that came with the Laser Force application was kind of lit. like I'm not trying to crap on the guy who made it. Obviously, I mean it's corporate. You know, he, he works hard you know. at his job, but like you could tell, it was like on the lower end of the effort spectrum, if you will. If you, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so sorry, if you will. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I I know way better jams than this. And I'm the one who's in here for eight, or not eight, but like six hours a day, you know, running games um, back to back. So yeah. I should be able to listen generally to what I want as long as it fits the vibe of laser tag. Right. And I feel like that's fair. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> well, so I, I changed the music and I was I was so clever about it, too. So like. The system files for the laser tag application is like, oh, there's a music folder and all the music is in there. So I just I took the new music and I just renamed it to the names of the old music. So if you oh, look yeah. in the folder, you wouldn't know <laughs> unless you like had the the length of the tracks memorized. <laughs> so, or like the sound, and obviously like when you when you booted up the when you started a game, it would sound a little different because it sounded better. Um, and there was a, a coworker of mine that I had named Michael. And he he happened to be Mister Mister <laughs> Mister Everything Has Michael. Be <laughs> uh, yes. Michael. Michael. And uh, I actually, I think I only ever in person met him once because he I always worked the the night shift because I had school during the day, and that was the only time I was available. But he was always on the day shift or the like the morning shift, whatever you want to call it. So he like almost immediately reported to management that the music had been changed but there at that time there were no cameras back there and uh you know obviously i'm not going to step forward in a minute because management <laughs> obviously wasn't happy for whatever yeah. reason uh but i managed probably to probably a get... licensing thing i would imagine i mean sure trouble. but are, are you telling me a lawyer's going to walk in there to play laser tag and be like hold it this isn't <laughs> oh, your music not. looks like absolutely you're not. gonna get sued <laughs> I have a, a heavily doubt that, sir. No, no Phoenix Wright ain't gonna be playing in no backwater Kansas town. Looks uh, like anyway. Phoenix Wright was Phoenix. Phoenix stupid. stupid. <laughs> Objection here. <laughs> <hurt> my feelings. <laughs> uh, I love that. Anyway, so um, they were like, "All right, stop changing the music." But I didn't stop. I kept doing it, <laughs> and I was never officially caught. Officially? But I don't. I, so beca- I think because, because I was no like, bodies. you should have yeah. just made it outrageous on your last day. Like, just, I, you know what? Just like Kanye West music. Like, well, something we'll that to doesn't why I was never all. able to do that. I'll tell you, and I'll, I was never, I would never have been able to do that. And I'll tell you why later. But I think, I think he, he knew because like I was the, the main other person that did laser tag the most. I think he probably just assumed it was me, and he, he so he decided. Um, because of that and another reason i'll get into in a second that without even having met me that he hated my guts that was just a thing that he decided to do and 
I guess because what I did bothered him. And, and the other thing I did was, so the the vest that we had, it was a vest and then a gun connected with like a, this a telephone cable. It was like curly right. and it had that same plug. Mm-hmm. And, but to, in order to prevent the cable from being damaged, you could also clip the gun to the vest, which is what you're supposed to do when they are hanging on the racks and not being used. And so the way the clip was positioned is if you're wearing it, it's like right in front of your crotch. And that was that was obviously a problem. I couldn't have that big <laughs> plastic gun swinging around because when you're absolutely, undeniably, pants-destroyingly hung like me, any object dangling in front of you in that area is going gonna, gonna to cause problems. <laughs> pants-destroyingly. <laughs> right, so, sorry i dropped my condom whatever body makes you happy yeah my magnum my magnum <laughs> condoms for my magnum dong yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> prove so, it no <laughs> well be, okay so between his between his magnum dong and his fourth no, hold on i'm not my guy is, my guy is picking up all chicks all left and right <laughs> yeah so so what I, I did was i there's also like side buckle straps that were supposed to keep the vest on you somehow even though gravity did literally 100 percent of the work and so i i fed the the like clip ring through that that way the gun was at my side and i thought that looked cooler because then it looked like i had it in some sort of invisible holster Mm -hmm. um but this michael guy didn't freaking like that because it looked wrong (laughs) Uh, i guess he didn't have a large penis like me (laughs) so so even though you didn't you didn't break the equipment at all he was still just like no i'm pissed i didn't break anything everything was still perfectly functional in fact, I say it would work. It worked even better, especially if he had a again large penis like me. Uh, but he was like, "I don't like this. Uh, I hate Jake." So like, yeah, I had this jerk wad breathing down my neck. But I kept on changing the music, and I was like, "I enjoy this because I'm I'm basically trolling him." But he he has no way of confirming that it's me. Even eventually, a camera was installed in the back computer room, not because of me, but because someone got caught smoking weed back there. Uh. So. Oh. I had to be, like, extra sneaky if I ever brought a thumb drive back there anymore. Uh, but I was, like, Just I was, like, like, the ninja pulling off the ultimate heist of being the troll. It was great. Then like... Just- on the camera you just see you like trip and then you see you like frantically trying to plug in this like thumb drive <laughs> <laughs> oh i oh, tripped no. oh no i fell hand first into the, fa- the front of the pc right on the usb drive <laughs> port <laughs> oops uh, oh darn one time though i walked in there and someone had like pointed the camera up at the ceiling i was like hey that's convenient i'm not gonna fix that i ain't touching this <laughs> but uh yeah i even um at, at halloween uh halloween like 28 20 17 i think it was or it might have been 20 you know it was 2017 i i like changed the music to uh the spooky scary skeletons remix oh really <laughs> i just blasted that almost all night <laughs> that's amazing wow. yeah like it, like and no one was there because it was a like on top of being halloween like there was so much going on that day like i think there's a there's a new saw movie if i remember correctly uh super mario odyssey dropped that day and uh, I believe season three of Stranger Things as well. And so it was like dead. So me and a couple of my coworkers were just dancing around in the arena to uh, Spooky <laughs> Scary Skeletons. <laughs> uh, the things that make That's work amazing. bearable. Yeah. Yeah. To live a and, life uh, in an arcade. Uh, so, so I was, you know, I was asking earlier about uh, work workplace injuries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I got one <laughs> at power Did play. You get compensation. I've never had a workplace injury. Well, I, this Did one was one heck of an injury. Let me tell you. I technically have, but none of them have been like they've all been like kind of my fault. So it's like I'm not gonna bother reporting it or anything. I like, like dropped a I like dropped a box on my finger and it like sheared it a little bit, and that's like as bad as it got. But believe me, uh, if I would would have been able to like get away with not reporting this i would have but i literally had to have i literally had to go to the emergency room okay oh my <laughs> oh what gosh. happened yeah. Do okay tell. i'll tell you i've not so, i actually haven't heard this no I, I can show you the scar tomorrow said uh if you want so yeah definitely please do. yeah so um uh I, I don't know if you guys uh, remember what it looked like back in the day but um in the very early years of power plays operation there was actually a like a putt-putt course in the back of yeah. the yep. of the facility where the laser tag arena is now. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. And and part of that aesthetic is there was this lighthouse 
on one of the corners of the walls that was like visible from pretty much anywhere and on the main arcade floor because it yep. stretched up to the top that. of the ceiling and in the bottom of that little uh, lighthouse was this little skinny door and concealed behind that door is just it was like a light switch that controlled power to a chunk of the building and part of the uh <clears throat> excuse me sorry i, I had to break brian edit that out <laughs> part of the <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's just gonna become oh. a meme now part of the um, nighttime <laughs> protocol for closing was that you had to shut that switch off so um and it usually it wasn't my responsibility most of the time the manager got it but like one night i was like oh i'm gonna show initiative and i'm gonna show that i'm a good boy and a model employee and i'm gonna get it for the manager and do her do her a favor and so i i flipped open the door and i reach in there and it, and i will concede that i was moving my hand a little faster than i should have been but regardless i had no way of knowing that there was a very sharp metal bar running along one side of the door frame and my thumb went straight into it and sliced it sliced, sliced my knuckle open yes. and i ended up needing to get like five stitches oh jeez. Wow. yes yeah. yeah my thumb was hanging open and i was bleeding like not not quite profusely but a lot uh-huh. and uh my coworker was right there and he like i didn't even know he had it on him but he pulled a rag out of nowhere and he's like here take it jeez oh, dude <laughs> he like, ripped oh, his sh- underwear off off from under his <laughs> pants and he's like, here you go i got you man i got you <laughs> wow. no and, and the funny part is the the guy who was um the manager that was on duty that night had only been working for like a week tops and it, he was like freaking out he's like oh oh the freak you're bleeding everywhere with the, the freak like, there's so do? much and paperwork I was, like, <laughs> I was like that's okay uh i'm gonna call my parents and i'm gonna have to pick me up and take me to the emergency room because i can guarantee you i'm not gonna be able to properly operate my motor vehicle in this condition so we i had them take me to the emergency room down the street and and like i think the next day that manager turned in his <laughs> his like uh, are you for real quit. oh <laughs> <Yeah>. wow <laughs> I don't know if he was wow, Jake. 100% me that scared him away, but he definitely you. it definitely happened right after that happened. <laughs> was 100% you. It was your fault. Wow. Entirely. Uh, thanks for the guilt trip. But you, but you know what was even worse was that was on like a I think a Friday night and the following Sunday I had to get on a a charter bus and go up to Miamisburg, Ohio for a week of summer camp. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, I Wait, couldn't bend on, my thumb on. for like weeks. What year was that? Do you remember? That would have been uh, oh, twenty. It was either twenty seventeen or I think it was twenty seventeen. Or it might have been. Okay, I was gonna say because yeah. I I I think I remember going to camp with you with that. I would have had, had yeah. My phone would have been wrapped up. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Uh, no, dude, sharp metals are the worst. Yeah, we. I mean, working at Honda, all these the cars that we get, most of the smaller cars like Accords and Civics have undershields on them. Mm-hmm. They have to take off in order to do an oil change. And it's a thin sheet of metal that's there just to protect the engine from getting hit by rocks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of times, those things will just get ripped to shreds. So you go to take it off. I mean, it's like shredded piece of metal that's just like sticking out here and there. And like, I mean, you put your hand on it the wrong way and you're slicing your hand off like it's mm-hmm. ridiculous the amount of sharp metal we deal with yeah i didn't even here's the thing i didn't even realize it was in there like obviously i you know doors have a frame but i didn't realize it was ex- like exposed sharp metal and they did nothing to cover it up even though they had the resources to do so like there is on some of the railings around some of the attractions for whatever reason they were topped with noodle and they i know so they, they definitely just had extra noodle, noodle. Yeah, yeah, I know they had extra noodle lying around. They could have slapped on top of that bar. And they, they freaking started, my manager started patronizing me after that happened. Like, I remember I was in the, uh, the like, the prize corner where you go to get all your, you re- turn all your tickets in. We, we referred to it as redemption because, that, you know, you're redeeming your tickets. Um, mm-hmm. And she was like, hey, I need you to uh, cut these, you know, boxes open and, and break them down so we can put them in the compactor. And she handed me a, a box cutter like a box knife and she's like hey are you sure you can handle it it's a pretty sharp blade i'm like are you kidding me right now you pulled the blade down just cut her throat <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can handle it <laughs> <laughs> i'll show you who can handle a freaking blade no but like um yeah she did that and then like over time i got put on like less and less like they kept probably putting me on the kids zone where all you do is let children into the gate into the play area and like, make sure that 
you know, no giant teenagers are trying to play in the kids area. <laughs> yeah. And that's literally all you do is you stand there behind the little like podium that and you, you hit the button to make the train go around the track once after you load all the kids in. <laughs> and I was like, Hey, um, I'd like to be able to, you know, work like laser tag again and, and, and like the go karts and the, and you know bumper cars because that stuff is actually pretty fun like for example with the mm-hmm. go-karts if you if like someone crashed or if you had to move them up to get them ready for the next race you got to drive them while standing it was great um yeah but yep. she was like uh, you know i'm just worried that you know i might not be able to handle them i'm worried for your safety i'm like you jerk Piece you're a terrible manager crap yeah she she was a terrible manager like i should, I should just I should get dunked on there. honestly is that why you quit jake well, here's here's the thing. I technically didn't quit, so like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still whole, scheduling you. They're still paying. Whole, no, me. no, 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 no. That's a whole story in itself, right? So, so uh, here's the thing. And like, she was like, she had like kind of like this like two faced, like way of being. Like she she'd act like she was this chill, laid back person, but then like multiple times a day she would come around to where you were working and be like, hey. It's little, it's little, it's little, it's little Sally's birthday. Can he, can he come in for free? He's, uh, can he come in for free? We, we just, we're just short of the amount of points we need to get in, but can you let us in anyway? Or like, oh, oh, he's just an inch too tall or an inch too short. Can you let him in? And of course you're expected to say no, because you need to like, you know, uphold the rules, especially because yeah. it's your, literally your manager talking to you. And, and I, I can guarantee you that conditioned us all into being like anal, rule following employees because we definitely ticked off a lot of customers when it would have been much easier to just let them in <laughs> for oh, sure yeah. tell me about it retail is the same way like i, mm-hmm. I swear there you have uh, some of the rules were dumb but it's like the customers were also dumb so it's like they're trying to tell you all this stuff and it's like these the rules i literally can't do anything about it mm-hmm. oh, especially yeah. when oh, it came boy. to especially when it came to legal issues like people would try to return uh-huh. alcohol or beer after buying it uh, and, or al- uh, alcohol and tobacco yeah it's like no legally i can't if i do that i'm losing my job and getting fined and the store is getting fined like i'm i, oh. I can't do anything about that oh i have to have and discussions about so pharmacy law off. every there single was, day there was a time <laughs> at price shopper where this lady came through my line with the fattest fakest stack of coupons i've ever seen in my entire life they're black and white there's nothing on the back of them obviously printed off of the internet i call my manager over and it becomes this huge thing where he has to like get in contact with loss prevention and talk to them and it got to the point of like if they scan it we have to take it so this yeah, lady like if, it, if it scans <laughs> and it rings up this lady bought it. like 200 dollars worth of groceries for like 15 bucks Dang. And she did that two or three times, but they I don't know if they ever nailed or like properly yeah. got it fixed. Because they if if they could fix it in the computer and make them to where it didn't ring up, then they could actually get her on false coupons. But the fact that they kept ringing up, they couldn't get it cut out of the system. <laughs> I was they so couldn't mad. do anything. Dude, you gotta tell me about it. Stick it to the man. It's like every time that. she came through, they have to have a manager go over there and, and approve all of them because there's so <laughs> many of them, and we can't do anything about it. See, my story just, is here Walmart again. doesn't have that policy, so they'll just ban you. <laughs> they'll just be like, "Yeah, you can't shop here anymore." Congratulations. We have man. had, we've only had to ban, I think, two people, and I don't. One of them used to be used to be a work an employee there, Ooh. but he gave me the most trouble out of everybody there. And he finally walked out one day, and he just left. He was like, "I'm done. I'm not. I'm not." staying here anymore and he left so I was like okay cool great not my problem anymore i'm glad i don't have to deal with him and then he tried to come back two weeks later and won his job back and oh. so my store director was slightly considering it but not really but he wanted my opinion on it anyways and i was like no i'm no. not dealing with him again <laughs> he walked out that's a fireball offense i'm like just don't even do it so he's like okay shoot we won't i and literally had the coming. same thing happen at my work in the pharmacy yeah. Yeah, he would like he kept coming back and causing issues for us, and eventually like started just cussing out customers on uh, right outside the front door and started screaming at the managers, and we're like, dude, we're like we had to call the cops on him to get him out, and we're like, never ever step foot on this property again. They're like you're you're just buzz off, like seriously. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah we, I told uh, I called this coming. This was, I I saw this coming like months ago. <laughs> yeah, we had a tech who, she just like left. In the middle of a shift. Didn't say anything. She just left. 
And yeah. then she was like, texted our man, our pharmacy manager. She's like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not coming back. And then same thing. She came back like two weeks later and she was like, hey, uh, so I made a terrible mistake. Uh, I really need that job. Can I have my job back? And everybody was like, no. Nope, sorry. And she was like, okay, understandable. Have a nice day. And then continued to fill all of her prescriptions at our pharmacy. And it's the most awkward thing ever. Every time she comes oh, up, I'm like, I'm like, oh, hey. Hey, how's it going? Hi, hi. How you doing? And she's that like, one time oh. and she's like in terrible, she's kind of in horrible health, honestly. And oh, I feel bad I... for her. But I so remember the like, other oh. person we had to kick out of our store was another ex-employee. <laughs> <laughs> this kid was 17. He was freaking 17. And he kept, he always came in with his friends and he was like, he would be vaping throughout the store. And it got to the point, like, one of the guys in the deli was was like best friends with him. And so he would pass him the vape while he's at work. And they'd be oh. vaping in the store, like, in the deli. And we're like, what the heck are you doing? Yeah, you You're can't distracting our employees. You're, you shouldn't be doing this anyways. And so there's one, he, he eventually, like, my store director could never catch him in the store. Like, he was always there when the store director wasn't. And he worked at the KFC across the street. Oh, so one yeah. day, my store director, he mm-hmm. got off the clock, bought his groceries, and then he took the the notice of, like, like you're not allowed back on our property thing. And he walked over to KFC to make him sign it while he was there. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that kid, was, that kid was a menace. He was, uh, yeah, he was something else. He's a menace to society. <laughs> I know who you're talking about, Brian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> oh man. So yeah, let me transition back into power play, and I'll tell you about how I <laughs> basically got fired, but not really, but sort of, but kind of. <laughs> it's, like, oh, yeah. it's like a really weird uh, ending to the whole adventure at that place. It was borderline retail, let me tell you. Like, <laughs> it's not. Oh, not, it's not public good, facing. I believe you. So um. In the, the latter months leading up to my termination of employment at PowerPlay, uh, another you know, guy started working there and by the name of Raphael. He doesn't deserve anonymity because he's a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I love so it. apparently the story was that he had worked there like way earlier, but he got angry and walked out, and then he, he like came back like two or three years later, whatever, and he's like, all right, I want to work here again, which I don't know why you would ever <laughs> want to come back to power play, but there he <laughs> was. And because he had apparently experience, he basically filled the first of a new role, which was shift lead. Basically you had, you were like, basically you were an assistant manager, like for all intents and purposes, uh, except that you, you, there were a lot of things you still couldn't do. But you could, I think you could, uh, I think you could open and close, maybe. I, I, I might be remembering wrong. But anyway, he definitely had authority over us uh, lowly floor workers. And he, he, like, made stuff up about us to get us fired. Like, I remember what? I was, uh, I remember I was hanging with my friend, my coworker Dalton, and he, he was, uh, not on the clock. He was, like, either, like, clocked out or, like, on break. And, and he also was not wearing a, his uniform shirt. So, like, you know, you wouldn't have assumed that he was working there. And he was he was talking next to me on uh, the Tilt-A-Whirl, which I was oh. not operating, by the way. It was not moving, and no one was wanting to ride it because it was dead. It was, like, you know, 5 p.m. on a Thursday night. <laughs> no, one, yeah. no, one, no one wants to go on the Tilt-A-Whirl at 5 p.m. on a Thursday night. And, uh, and my, my manager just comes out and, and is like, get out get out you're fired you're fired get out and <laughs> they both like walk he's like whoa hang on can we talk about this like i don't even know what's going on and they're like, he's like all right fine i'll hear your side of the story and then like, they like walk off the floor into a back room and i'm like i'm just like sitting there and like shock and so like this group comes up to the laser tag and they're like hey can we can we uh play around there and i'm like yeah and they're, they're like uh we want to we want to have the oh, this whole group of uh six play but we've only got enough for five and i'm like listen man normally i'd be Gung ho for letting one of you in for free, but I just watched my co- my coworker get fired right in front of me, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> he just got taking yeah, risks tonight, and they're t- they they're grabbed like, oh, him that's by the arms and they... man. <laughs> you feel <go> ready? <laughs> they grabbed him by the arms and they carted him off. It was <laughs> yeah. So okay, so it turns out this guy Raphael had lied to the manager and said that Dalton was operating the 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 um, Tilter World 
uh, with, while shirtless. <laughs> what? Like nips out and everything, apparently. Uh, but uh, you know, he when Bruh. Lee came out, the manager what came out. What an insane lie. Yeah, I well. think Dalton was Dalton wasn't even like he was wearing either a white shirt or a wife beater. He definitely wasn't like nips out shirtless. <laughs> um, but yeah, that obviously was a lie, and Dalton was able to like talk his way out of being fired. And and that was the day I learned that hey, this this manager like he was the only he was uh the only male manager at the time and he was the only one that was like sensible and would hear your side of the story before taking any action and so uh one day i'm you know a couple weeks later i'm working laser tag and he comes into the the lobby and he's like hey jake let's talk for a minute um Raphael told me that you have been uh threatening customers when you tell them the rules to laser tag and that you're uh abusing your powers ref and and repeatedly giving them yellow cards which in in the in that game, if you give someone a yellow card, it also subtracts like a hundred points from their score. It's so like you could if oh, you dang, if okay. you wanted to, you which just... I did. Sometimes <laughs> you could give people a negative score at the end of the game. That's and, really funny. and the whole the whole point of that is you're supposed to use that to discourage people from running, which is what I did. Uh, yeah. And that's also part of how you bring them back in if you if you're um, if they run their their vessel shut down, and you can either just bring them in by reactivating them or you can yellow card them which will take points and then put them back in the game and that's usually the mode i favored and sometimes it would get stuck in that mode because the way you switch between different modes when you were in uh referee mode was you hit the button which only worked half the time on on the the like four grip of the gun yeah and so he's like he's like yeah he said you're you're over here abusing your power and and you know being unruly or whatever and so he's like i'm gonna stay and i'm gonna watch you do your your job for at least one round of laser tag and so this group comes up and i do my thing no threats because i wasn't threatening anyone and no abuse because i wasn't abusing anyone and wouldn't you know it the manager was like yeah all right looks like Raphael was uh exaggerating the truth so i'm gonna go have a talk with him you're absolutely How fine you keep doing allow- exactly what the you're doing first one i would have fired uh. Raphael. i feel like this guy's shirtless running the tilt world and you go out and he's just standing there in a t-shirt <laughs> right be like, yeah, yeah you're like, fired you're i was so freaked lying. out because he just came out without without warning was like you're fired i was like you're oh. done you're done oh. <laughs> so yes. so um yeah Raphael has oh. been on me for uh several months now at this point i think because uh because both me and Dalton were able to get out of being fired at the hand of his lies. It, it uh, pissed him off even more. And uh, fast forward to the company holiday party, which is uh, every every year in uh, January, the owner of both power play locations has all the staff from the north location come to the south location. Location, I'm <clears throat> sorry, which is where I worked, and uh, we we hosted them and ourselves, and we were we were just given. Uh, you know the run of the building we could play as many games as we wanted without being able to obviously redeem tickets for prizes and we could play you know as many rounds of laser tag or go cards or whatever it was a good time there were ticket raffles and uh merriment just no 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 drinking of any sort because uh most of us were underage and uh so uh i was tasked with running the laser tag games because i was an employee at that location so I had to I had to be the one to you know hit the button and I was still able to participate in some of them but I had to be the ref most of the time which kind of sucked. But um and the, the worst part was I was off the clock like I wasn't getting paid oh, for it. It's, yeah, it's, you're it was just a party refing. <laughs> yeah yeah so um part of the arena is there's a if you go in the lobby there's a door all the way in the right corner and that's and it says employees only you go up there and it and it's a staircase that leads up to a catwalk. And off that catwalk, it, that whole area is um, the maintenance area for the laser tag vests, and uh, for and there's also a breaker room back there. And so when there are vests under maintenance, they're hung over the railing on that catwalk, and usually they don't glow. Usually they're all the way turned off, and they don't do anything. But on this particular night, um, they were on and they were doing. I think they were doing their idol animation which is where they just loop through some of the colors of the teams mm. but I, I like saw them up there and i was like hey is that is that people and so i went up there and to make sure there's no one up there and admittedly i might have you know shot off a few shots because it's a great vantage point that allows you to snipe pretty much anywhere on the <laughs> arena <laughs> uh and as i was like doing that 
again, mainly making sure there was no one up there, uh, I foolishly left the door to the stairway open, and the manager walked into the, uh, the, the terrible woman manager that was patronizing me earlier. She walked into the uh, lobby and was like, hey, is anyone up there? Why is that door open? And I was like, oh, hey, I was just um, making sure there was, and she like cut me off. I was like, you're not supposed to be up here. You're supposed to be running the game. Uh, we're going to have to talk about this later. And then she like walked away. Bro, it's a party. What? Yeah, I know. And you're I was not even, not on, even the on the clock. And also, yeah. I'm an employee. So I Every there, there. Everybody there is an employee. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's a little stupid. So I, I like, I come in on the like following Monday or whatever. And, uh, they're like, okay, so I can't remember why, what they are like, originally they wanted to sit down and talk with me for something else that I didn't do, but they were like, like the other manager was like, okay, so like I walk in and I start a clock and she's like, she stops me. She's like, Hey, come over here and let's talk. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, so like, uh, listen, unfortunately your, uh, employment with the company is terminated and you are no longer working here. And I was like. Hold on, time out. Yeah, what? Uh, stop, what? stop everything. Let's take a moment and address why this is happening. Because I did nothing, literally nothing. And, oh, I, for the life of me, I can't... Okay, I remember now. So, there was a separate incident where I was working the... Oh, this is such a complicated story. I'm so sorry, <laughs> everyone out there. There was a separate incident where I was working the kids' zone on a extra dead night. Literally, no one was there. Uh, especially not small children that would go in the kids' zone. Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, I was sitting at the podium, and I was on my phone. Now, granted, you can argue that that was being in the wrong, but I wasn't the only employee that did that, and even some of the managers did that when there was just no one there. Uh, but to be fair, they only ever did that in the back of the building with the with, at the laser tag and the bumper car desk. But that's not the point. The point is... Uh, what I was doing wasn't, like, 100% wrong. wrong, I guess, from a certain point of view. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, Raphael comes around, and he's, he's like, the acting manager that night because the other managers can't be bothered to do their job, barely. Like, literally, the, the patronizer had me do her job at one point. She had me, like, take inventory at the prize counter. It was stupid. Anyway, Ugh. she's, like, he's, like, hey, you can't be, you know on your phone while you're on the job and i was like okay sorry i'll I, and i put it away and 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 like do you i'm standing there at this podium doing nothing so i'm like and my legs are getting tired so i pull over this stool and i sit down and i guess since i was sitting down it kind of looked like i was on my phone and he was like hey you can't you can't be sitting down either you gotta be standing and i was like all right fine so i sit back up and then he walked away and i sat back down <laughs> and he's like he came around and he's like all right if i catch you sitting down around your phone again uh i'm gonna send you home for the rest of the night and i was like okay and i'm just gonna let you know right now mr Raphael, sir um for the future uh i'd really like to be put on something other than kids zone because i'm i'm good at other things <laughs> i swear <laughs> and uh he's like whatever and he like walks away and darn it if my legs weren't just so tired that night and i sat down again and i think i was like checking the weather at the time on my phone when he came around again he's like a freaking sneaky little butthole too he was like <laughs> really short and you could never hear him coming <laughs> except when he was like right behind you and he'd be like hey and, be like, oh, frick. <laughs> and uh, he's like all right man I told you if I caught you again, then I'd have to send you home. And I was like, all right, is this you sending me home then? And he's like, yep, sure is. And I was like, are you sure I can't be put anywhere else other than Kids Zone? Because I'd like to give that a try tonight. He's like, no. And I was like, all right, see you Monday. And I was like, walked, walked out to uh, go home. It's like, I understand the phone part, but like the yeah. not sitting down part, that's like. I yeah, never really understand that the not and, sitting down thing. That's like borderline have, asinine. Yeah, that... thing, I have no sympathy for you, for you guys like that because my entire time at Price Shopper was spent standing, and it oh, never so it bothered mine. me at all. So it's like I don't, you can't stand up for eight hours. I'm sorry. No, okay, <laughs> but, but you got to walk around. I'm assuming, right? Not yes. all the time. Sometimes you could it was walk just, back I, and forth at the counter. Yeah, like, I didn't. I couldn't do really? that. I had to like stand by the podium, otherwise they wouldn't see me at the gate. Also, the same you went for two feet. If you're standing and making sure people had a buffet ticket, you just had to stand behind that podium and 
do nothing. You especially couldn't get it on your phone because the front counter was right there, and there was almost always a manager there. Well, yeah, no. Also, getting you on had the like three cameras on you. Anyway, you don't want to. I come in. I, this is why. I, okay, so I come in the next Monday, and the manager's like, "So, uh, Raphael told me you quit," and I was like, "Oh, hey now, hello." That's most certainly not true. Uh, he sent me home because I couldn't sit down on a stool for whatever reason. She's like, "Well, you know what? <laughs> I I can't just." You know, there, I've got two people who are saying different things, and it's a conflict. And I, I can't be. I don't have time With to sit here and liar. determine what the truth is. He said you quit, and I was like, "But I didn't. I didn't quit. I don't want to quit. I want. I need. I would like this job because it gives me money." And she's like, "Well, you know what? Uh, you weren't supposed to be up on that catwalk uh, uh, that night at the holiday party. So uh, you know what." You, well, I'm gonna fire you for that. You're fired. I was like, "Are you what? You, you, you can't be Dude, real right now." And she's like, "She gave me this crazy. whole spiel. <laughs> she gave me this whole spiel about how she needed to have a job so she could put food on the table, and she because she had a kid, and she's like, tell me about how she her old job." Who um, cares? They, I love that. As she's like, firing you. Yeah. yeah, she was telling me about how at her old job, she she needed she she like asked for two extra weeks just so she could have the extra time to find another job. I was like can I have two extra weeks to find another job? And she's like, no. <laughs> I was wow, like, what a okay. Wait a, what, right. a, what, a, uh, what an experience to just be like, literally <laughs> lectured about how important it is to work and how important it is to make money to support yourself and your family. And she like, cool. lectured that all the time. I need that, that job. And I need this job. And then she was like, yeah, well, you don't have it anymore. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I managed to like, cause she, she called me like two days later and was like, uh, we just want to, you know, confirm that your your empo- your employment has been terminated and that you are no longer working here. And I was like, No. First of all, <laughs> isn't that your job? <laughs> and secondly, yeah, also, I guess I, I'm not there anymore. And she's like, I don't have time but, to field everybody's stories to determine if you quit or not. So you're yeah, fired. Basically, and I was like, uh, Hold on, I I that's not fair because you're firing me for something that. I wasn't even on the clock for, and it, I wasn't even really doing. I wasn't slacking off. And she's like, I, I eventually I managed to talk her into agreeing that I quit instead of being fired. She but didn't it, even, like, at this point, it doesn't even matter yourself. anymore because because she doesn't work there anymore, and it's not power play anymore. But she literally, like, walked, she, like, no call, no showed, like, two weeks after she fired me. I was so mad to hear about that. No, no I'm not no still showing. salty. Why do you ask? <laughs> no call, no showing sucks because whenever That's there was the a no call, no show, I had to take their place. <laughs> I had a pharmacist. Bro, you do think that it once. sucks for you? <laughs> I got my butt chewed when y'all when y'all didn't show up. Yeah. Whoa. I, I the amount of lectures I've had to sit through from freaking store managers getting mad at me for when somebody else doesn't show up, and I'm like. I've called them four times and they haven't answered. I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? The workforce is a very interesting place. (laughs) And there was rumors going around that this this terrible manager was boning one of the employees. It was was crazy. I would not. You know what? It is funny that you mentioned that because I have a story. (laughs) All right. Well, do you want to segue into who wants to go next? Well, I was going to say let's pass on to Seb. Yeah. Well, I was going to also, but then you mentioned that and it kind of flowed perfectly. (laughs) Right. But... I think we should still pass on to Seb. Do you have any crazy misadventures at Deanna Rose? Oh, oh Deanna Rose for <laughs> sure, and at Walmart as a farm working in the pharmacy. Um, the craziest thing that ever happened at Deanna Rose um, of like, did you get shat on by goat? <laughs> oh, I for sure. Well, I I swept up goat shit, so <laughs> similar. Um, no, but I did have. Uh, oh, so I, I, my favorite place to work in it when I worked at Deanna Rose was the fishing shack. Absolutely. So, yeah. So people who don't know what Deanna Rose is, it's <laughs> basically like a little uh, kitty petting zoo. Kitty, yeah, like petting zoo slash amusement amusement park place. It's, it's like kind a of very different. small one though. It's a farm yeah. kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very wholesome. It's a really cool place. Um, not the best place to work because they don't pay you enough, but I bet it's they get really hot in the pay. summers. Oh, one hundred percent. It was oh, well no surprise there. And there's no AC in the fishing shack, but it was still my oh. favorite place to work because they would always stick me with somebody who kind of like couldn't work on their own. And so, <laughs> when you were in the fishing shack, you sold all the stuff for the fishing poles. But there's also a little baby goat pen right next to the fishing shack, and you made goat milk bottles 
so that people could go bottle feed the baby goats. Um, and so whenever I worked in the fishing shack, I would always just sit and you, you pretty much have to make bottles 24 seven. You cannot stop. You just have to keep making them and then recycling <laughs> the ones when they're empty, you go grab them from the pen and you bring them back in. You just keep making more. So I like being in the Free fishing shack because they'd stick me with people who aren't <laughs> trustworthy enough to be working on their own. So I just stick them at the register and I just work on all the maintenance stuff. So I never had to run the register or worry about that. I mean, I could if I needed to. Um, yeah, that's nice. But I just didn't like it. And there was this one kid named Brady who would always go. Kind of, he's a perfectly nice kid, but pretty much had no idea what was going on sometimes. He had <laughs> very little common sense. So I'm just sitting there making bottles once. And it's hot outside. Uh, we have a fan back there that I've got pointed at me while I'm filling up these bottles. And there's like a little fridge next to me that has sodas and waters and stuff that people can buy if they want. And Brady's at the, at the register just doing his thing. And then he comes to me in the back and he's like, hey, do we have any like ice or water back here? And I'm like, well, we got the, we got the bottled water, but no ice or anything. He's like, ah, Okay. I was just wondering. And then he goes back up to the front, and I can kind of see through the cracks that of the shack that, like, people are gathering outside. And so I'm like, Brady, why did we, uh, why did you, why did you need ice by any chance in the water? And he's like, oh, somebody just passed out in front of the register. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. So, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I was going to get some ice and, like, give it to him, but we don't have any, so I don't, I don't really know what to do. I'm like, are you are you for real? Uh, so I, like, had to hop the counter and, like, go over to him. And I'm, like, in high school, so I don't have any training at this point. Mm. And they're, like, coming to. And I'm like, well, I, we're going to have to call an ambulance because, like, you just passed out. <laughs> so we had to call an ambulance. And I was like, Brady, why didn't you say anything about this? He was like, well, I told you. <laughs> I was like, you just let this person pass out in front of you and just let them lay on the ground until somebody came and helped them. That was crazy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I saw man. somebody almost push a stroller into the pond. <laughs> and I had to jump the counter and go grab that. It was empty, thankfully. But I Ooh. thought it had somebody in it. Or a little baby in it. Yeah. The The dumbest thing that ever happened to me at Deanna Rose is this little girl and I felt so bad at the time but it was just too insane so the fishing shack is sat on a dock and there's literally a little fish feeding container you know you stick your quarter in turn it and it gives you a handful of food right and it's in this like little wooden box and it's just right on the corner of the pier and so I'm sitting there I'm just checking people out I'm fixing fishing poles on the side and this little girl comes up now a little i say little but she's probably like 12 she comes up and she's like she's still pretty small and she's like hey um can i get my my quarter back uh i didn't get any fish food out of the container what is this the nfl <laughs> yeah um now oh, this God. is a get out bro <laughs> this is a pretty common occurrence um so the thing is though it's such a common occurrence that uh i actually took the machine out of the box earlier that day so there's no food container there it was empty we did we weren't going to refill it so i just took it out because i'm like people are going to put their quarters in there and they're going to turn it even though they see it's empty and they're going to (laughs) come complain to me that they didn't get any food despite seeing that it's empty and i'm gonna have to give them quarters back um, and so I just took it out. So I was like, nobody can ask me these dumb questions. Right. And then this little girl comes up and asks me, and I'm like... You underestimate her power. And I was like, for a second, I thought I was having a stroke. Because <laughs> I just looked back and saw that the machine was sitting right behind me. And it's empty. There's one across the pond at another dock. And so I looked at her and I was like, oh, did you like put your quarter in on the, like, the fishing dock on the other side of the, the pond? And she was like, no. I was like, oh, so you, what do you mean? You use, <laughs> she's like, I put that? my, she's like, I put my quarter in the machine and it didn't give me any food. I was like, this, this one, the one right behind you? She's like, yeah, this one. And I was like, did you do this like a couple hours ago? Like before I'd taken the machine out? And she's like, no, like I literally just did it. 
And so I looked her in the eyes, and I'm trying so hard not to laugh. I thought I was getting, like, pranked Pumped. by my other coworker there. <laughs> like, that she had set this girl up because I'd made such a big point of taking the machine out. Because she's over there dying in the corner. She's laughing so hard. And I was like, this girl for sure, it was, it like, she got paid to come say this to me. <laughs> and so I was like, there's no machine in that box. And she just kind of, like, looks really, really genuinely confused. And kind of looks back at the machine, then looks at me. And then she just goes, oh. <laughs> and, then she, and then she walks away. Yeah. And so I'm thinking... Oh my word. That's crazy. I can't believe it. I turn around. I'm I'm like holding in tears because I can't believe that this just happened. And I'm talking to the, my coworker. Her name was Candace. And I was like, you 100% set her up to do that, right? Like you told her to say that. And she was like, dude, I, I did not tell her to say. I have no idea who that is. We're both laughing really hard. And then the dad comes up. Oh, no. And I'm like, I'm about to get chewed out by this dad for laughing at his kid. Um, <laughs> thankfully, yeah. that was not what he was there for. He was just as genuinely confused as the daughter. <laughs> he came up and he was like, "So, uh, yeah, so how do we how do we get our quarterback?" <laughs> and so I'm like, "I, man, I don't really know how to help you because there's no machine there." So I went out, and there was a literal crack in the wood, like the wood split from age, you know. <gasps> The daughter had shoved the quarter into that split in the wood. Oh. It was literally just sitting there, just sticking out of this split. And I can only imagine that she had shoved that quarter in there and then just held her hand out in midair, waiting for food to oh miraculously like, That's incredible. appear. I was like, I cannot believe. So Sir, I just this is pulled the quarter out of the wood. Yeah, I just pulled the quarter out of the wood and I just gave it to the dad. And I was like, there you go, man. You're, you're good to go. He's like, oh, thanks, appreciate it. Oh my like, god, dude, come on! <laughs> Reminds me of the do you guys see Parks and Rec? Yeah. Yes. The scene where the lady comes into Ron Swanson, she's like, "Sir, I was in one of your parks, and there was a water fountain that said don't drink. So I made some tea with it, and now I have an infection, sir." Right. You guys, <laughs> you guys just keep talking. I'll be back in like a minute. You guys just keep okay. talking. Okay. We got you, Brian. I did this. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> um. <laughs> So while he's gone, that his story actually reminded me of <laughs> the countless times at Price Shopper that um like so when if you bring in your own shopping bag to use for your groceries, we're supposed to type in a code. I believe it was sixty eight. Yeah, if you type in sixty eight, you get like five cents off a bag or five five cents off your st- your order for every bag you bring. Yeah, and so people would bring in you know ten or twelve bags. 25 cents off for each one and you'd only use three so you're only gonna give them 15 cents off because it's like you didn't use those other bags yeah, so it's they're like sitting they're not in your there. Cart. <laughs> and Unused. people would get so pissed off about that and want the, you know want their however many cents it was and i i mean the dumbest people were the ones who would bring in you know they get two items bring in their one bag and then come back days later and be like um i was looking at my receipt and they didn't give me my five cents for my bag and I like it got to the point that I have I had so many people doing that I, I was so fed up with it I would I on multiple occasions just pull out pull out, pull out my wallet and just gave them a nickel for my wallet I'm like there you go I'm like I'm not gonna go through this whole process of typing in the code doing all this whole transaction just for you to get your five freaking cents yeah you know, just leave me alone this is so dumb that you're this mad about five cents I understand like your that. order was like two dollars it's not gonna save you much to get your five cents back. <laughs> Oh, um, there was yeah. a story I kind of wanted Seb to hear. So, David, you have something else? Um, I do have a question for you guys. That makes me remember something. Okay. Uh, what was the smallest tip you guys ever got? The smallest what? Like tip. Uh, how What's many, a tip? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, technically, we weren't allowed to accept tips. I would accept. Oh, yeah. Really. I would officially every tip I got, <laughs> no matter what. Officially, we weren't allowed to. We could in our play. It it well the thing is so according to the employee handbook you weren't allowed to accept tips or gratuities of any kind. However, that's stupid. However, that's why I took them. So yeah, corporate was if corporate <laughs> saw you take a tip, you would get in trouble. However, it came down to the store director, 
Some store directors would be like, you know what, that's fine, I don't care. Uh, but that was what Brett was like. He's like, I don't care, you take tips. He's like, you guys are working your butts off anyway, so go ahead. Jason was the one before him, and he was more of a, uh, if I don't see it, it doesn't happen. Go ahead. Like, if I'm not seeing right it, that's on. fine. If I, He's like, but if I see it, I'm going to have to step in just because it is, you know, corporate rule. Then Chris before him was like, no, nah, you, you're not allowed to take tips whatsoever. Like, that's flat out. Like, we've had customers. Actually, David, your sister, a customer got her flowers because she 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 was graduating. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember. There's, there's some going on uh, that... I don't remember at the moment, but it was it basically was a really sad story. So the customer bought her flowers for her graduation, and our store store director did not let her have them. That's like he crazy, wouldn't let her yeah. have them. Yeah, yeah, he would. I mean, you can ask her about it later on. Like Chris would not let her have them because it was against company policy to accept tips or gratuities of any kind. So it was like, really? Like that is really jacked up. However, customer service um, while Brett was there. We have had multiple people come in to get lottery tickets, and they would win upwards of $500, and they would give us $20, $30, $40 as a tip just because we sold them a winning ticket or something. Wow. And it, 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 yeah, it was great. It was absolutely great. I think the I smallest love- tip I ever got was this lady pulled 75 cents out of her pocket and was like, <laughs> she was like, you're doing good work, Sonny. I like helped her out through her car and everything, and I was like, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, wow. you ever like hand cash to somebody, be like, keep the change. I've had that happen be- with people, and it was literally like two cents. He's like, keep those two cents for yourself. And I was like, okay, cool. What I didn't I need your two this? cents, but thank you. A shiny Lincoln. The biggest tip I ever got was like $25. Wow. I, I, was, nice. I, I was shocked. It was the sweetest person ever. I helped him out to his car, and he was like, I have $25 in my pocket. I want you to have them. And I... That was one of the only times I was like, sir, absolutely not. Like, there's no way that I'm just going to take. And he's like, no, no, please. And I was like, thank you. You paid for my lunch. <laughs> so, because that was. What were you buying for lunch for 25 bucks, bro? You, I, I wasn't. You... Nothing was $25, but I used $25 to pay for my lunch. I, I had change. It helped aid me. I just used the cash that I had. That's fair. Hmm. I hope yep. you didn't get the employee meal. I did. <laughs> that deli food will jack you up, dude. <laughs> uh, well, I only ever got tipped one time my whole ten year at power play. Uh, ten yes. years? Ten ten year. No, ten year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was only there for like do you a know, year. Do you know what a ten year is? Yes, dude? but it, the, okay. way, the way he okay. said it made it sound like ten years. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, fair, fair. Um, so... The, the context for this is there was one other position. Uh, well, I mean, there, were, there was here two other positions, sorry, that you could work that were not management at Power Play. You could be a party hero, which is like nice. when someone has a birthday party there, you're their host, and you, you take them to the different like rides and attractions, and you, you show them their party room, and you basically make sure their their time their experience there runs as smoothly as possible. And then there was like the... Uh, I think it was, I don't remember exactly what it was called, but basically you were an event host. So, like, if a company came in and held, like, a like a team building event there or whatever, you would be their host. And they, instead of, like, having a party room, like, for children, uh, we had, like, a, one of the dining rooms would be closed off and reserved for them. And that so, like, sense. yeah, right, so, guys, and it would be in this I'm group back. of, like, adults who are mainly there to probably just drink. <laughs> but, so, like... I may you know, need to take cut them, my basically time short. The... Sorry to interrupt. Oh, um, what? I, I may need to uh, dip out for for now. Um, my Ooh. wife just got home, and she was t- taking the dogs out for a walk, and they were chased by a pack of coyotes. Oh, my oh, goodness. Crap, dude. And then one of the dogs got sprayed by a skunk. Uh, oh. So <laughs> they, they, nobody's hurt or anything. They just smell bad, and everybody's safe, uh, but... <laughs> That's I've got some things. That's I got some things I gotta go take care of. But uh, all right, you you do that, man. I understand. You go take care of your stuff, and if you come back and we're still on here, feel free to hop back in. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I will. Uh, hey, right. Thanks I, for I understanding, may, guys. I may or may not. Come thanks back for on. talking with us. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yeah, but no we problem. We really appreciate you coming on. Is there anything you want to plug real quick, just in case you don't get back on? Uh, yeah, shout out pharmacy school. Shout out Big Pharma. Uh, just kidding. Big Pharma sucks. <laughs> oh, no. Big Pharma sucks. Uh, pharmacists hate them just as much as you do. Cool. Learn his secret. Good to hear that. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, see you around, man. Have a good night.
Darn. Okay, well, right. then he won't be able to hear my story, but that's okay. So, it's all right. Well, well, I, I was in a bit. Where was I? Okay. We're talking about so, party heroes and stuff. So, yeah, if, if when, when like a company has their like corporate, you know, team building exercise, they play like three different attractions. It's usually go karts, laser tag, and then, um, did you guys ever play Whirly Ball? Uh, no, 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 I never. We but do you know? Do you know chance. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I know what it is. Okay, so that was probably the funnest thing to host because you sat up in the box and you were you were the ref and you had a microphone and it had like sound effects box on there. It was great. Anyway, you hosted those three events with them. And you you know you you walked them around the arcade and uh, and then at the end of the night you handed out little plastic medals. <laughs> and, but so during the course of that night, uh, we were in the laser tag and this one of the guys comes up and. I think he thought I had a, a breast pocket on my shirt, but I didn't. And he he like tried to shove a five dollar bill in there. Uh, he held my hand out to take, and he's like, "Hey, you buy yourself something nice." I was like, th- th- "Thank you, sir." <laughs> so did he just like just caress your chest, I guess. <laughs> Basically, with the with the, 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 the five dollar bill. <laughs> Why don't you take this down to the store? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that reminds me, real quick, off topic from work stories, at camp one year, and I, I think, David, I think I've done this to you before, but at camp one year, I was in a group of guys, we were just chilling, talking, and some another group of guys was walking by from a different church, and just completely out of the blue, one of the guys steps out of their circle, walks over to a random guy in our circle, just rubs his three fingers down the middle of the chest, and just goes, dinosaurs, <laughs> and then just walks off and continues walking, we're like, what the heck was that? <laughs> It was oh. so weird, but it was hilarious. Oh, oh it's good. Um, it's good. It's funny. So, Dinosaur so you so earlier you mentioned you were pretty sure one of your bosses was boning up an employee, and um, oh yeah, David, I don't, I don't. I were heard you the there? <laughs> were you there when that one manager was was? I, I'm not going to say their names because I don't, you know, and for you can always edit out. Eh, anyways, um, <laughs> edit so, yourself out, Brian. <laughs> yeah. We'll call them. We, we'll give them nicknames: Paul and Jane. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, David, you may know who I'm talking about. Uh, I, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Paul and Jane. Um, Paul was the manager. There was the assistant manager. Oh yeah, I know which manager you're talking about. And okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So. I had, I, we weren't supposed to, the people, you know, nobody was supposed to know where the camera room was, where the security cameras were, or like mm-hmm. where you could see the screens, but pretty much most of us knew, like everybody in the office knew where it was and stuff like that. We didn't have keys to it, but we could, we knew where it was. So if a manager was in there watching the cameras, we, you know, we'd go in there every once in a while, we weren't supposed to, but they were nice enough about it. Like we could sit there and watch them with us or watch the cameras with them. And, um, unbeknownst to the majority of us. Until, except the fact that, you know, I knew and the office manager knew because we were both really close to the people in loss prevention. So we knew what they were doing. But one day the loss prevention decided to put a camera in the camera room. And it was <laughs> at, at the time, it was the only camera in the store that had audio to it. Uh, so okay. they could hear everything going on in the security room. So and wait, where was the, where was the feed for that camera though? <laughs> yeah. That was, that... In <laughs> that was in corporate. Oh, okay. <laughs> the only people who could access that were loss prevention from the corporate office. Um, uh, so one day, and it was it was a Wednesday night, I remember, because Wednesday night was our steak night. So we uh. sold steaks from like 4 to 8 p.m. And they were, by the way, fantastic freaking steaks. They were amazing. But what Paul kind? and Jane, yeah, code names Paul and Jane were in the security office, and Jane worked in the deli. So she, I mean, she was she was known as Potato Lady because she always made the baked potatoes. And oh, again, I know, I know um, who you're talking about. Amazing baked potatoes! Oh my word. Okay. So All she right. always made the yeah she always made the baked potatoes, and it was there's one night it was like. She was super it was sweet not, too. She was very super sweet. It was nine o'clock because it was getting close to closing time, and the lights in the office were closed or the lights of customer service were closed because we had, or were off because we had just closed customer service at nine, and you know I was working or. I wasn't. No, actually, I was there, but I didn't know what happened until later on. But they, Paul was looking at the cameras for something. I think it was helping Jane out with with something like she had saw some shady people that day. So he was looking for him, and um, we found out later on that 
and and I, I only know this because again I was really close to the guy and loss prevention because I had applied for a loss prevention position at that time, and I mean didn't get it, but I was really close with that guy. He was telling me later on that there he was watching the cameras one day and he that day she had gone into the security room with him, and I would closed the door and they were watching the cameras, and she like she asked him if he had gotten a steak that night and he's like oh I got all all the steak I need right here and he like patted his pants, <laughs> and so she she like. She like grabbed his thigh, and at this point, this the lost rich guy like paused it, and he's like, "I know where this is going. And I really don't want to. It's like, but I have to watch this in order to like actually do anything about it." So he's like, "I, it. I, I mean, have she just to watch this. Give him a sloppy toppy right there." And I'm like, "Keep in mind, both of these people are married, uh, and one one of them, Paul uh, is like in Paul is like in his seventies." Uh. And Jane is in like her, I want to say late fifties, early sixties. Oh, okay. So I'm like, bad, it's it's kind of weird, but gross. It's like just yeah. really, really gross. And like Paul is a man I highly respected the entire time Me he was too. there. He was one of my favorite managers. Dang. Yeah, and so like I found out what was happening, and I and I found out because the uh, district manager and the director of store operations came in and if you ever see them together you you know something's going on you know a manager's getting fired because they they never they're never in the store at the same time hardly ever so if they're both in there something's going down especially when loss prevention walks in with them and you're like oh great somebody's getting fired <laughs> and i mean i didn't i didn't see him walk out because he just kind of like he just disappeared but like then i found out later like i was like where's where's paul like i haven't seen him in a while and they're like, um, I think he got fired. Like he was just he was escorted out by the managers. And I was like, what the heck? And then that's when Lost Prevention the guy was like, yeah. So this this is what happened. He's like, don't tell anybody because it's not you know supposed to be common knowledge. But he's like, this is this is what happened. And I was like, oh gross. It that's, was the that's uh, weirdest ordeal ever. Yeah. Sounds like she really baked his potato. Yeah. <laughs> she did. She sure had her steak that night. That's for oh, sure. Oh snap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was pretty gross, pretty weird. Mm. Oh, the workplace. Uh, I mean, so David, you pretty much covered that, your whole working career. I think I touched most of the exciting stuff. I got paid to help, like, some pump out the bottom shelf of, like, the dairy area. I got paid overtime for it, uh, so that was fun, I guess. You had to uh, pump out the dairy air. Yeah. <laughs> dairy air. <laughs> <laughs> dairy. dairy area um dude david do you know the stuff that went on in the back in that back room the back break room that's why they call it the back rooms never take <laughs> a black light to that room i swear oh rooms. don't tell me that do you remember okay do you remember david from the frozen department yeah yes yeah i worked with him a lot yeah david and david you, did, you, did you ever work did you ever work with jossie or was that before your time I know Addie worked with them with I her. I think no. Okay, well she she was the office manager before Lori, mm -hmm. and she walked in on David getting hit in that back room. Yo, and like we need to mark this episode explicit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well technically, I mean, Seb cussed earlier, so I might. Well, that's I've been thinking about that since that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I might just like there's a little bit of explicit content. I would. Nah, might as well. But yeah, no, it was it was bizarre. Yeah, right. Like the stories that come out of that back room. Is that did so did he get fired as a result of that? No, he still works there as far as I'm aware. Really? I think I heard that cuz I don't remember he like yep. wasn't there for a long time and then I was like and then I saw him again and I was like Well, he was doing he's doing college courses. Yeah, I know. I talked I I talked to him frequently. He was working in the back room. You only work with like three people, so you know. Yep. It, I, it was like three actual employees, and then the rest were just like managers. Hmm. Brian was press shop at your first job. First official. Oh shoot! I've been shaking my mic. First official job. Yes, I, I did work for briefly for a lawn uh, lawn care company um, for oh, about a both year, of but it. Yeah, yeah. Grass. This one. So we actually, I actually, I did the we, I did the uh, trimming around the church for a year. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, that was that was hot as heck. Um, and it was it would be stupid. I'd be trimming for 
I would start at seven and about four. Like it took me that long to do all the trimming around and it would be so freaking hot. And then the second I got the blower out, the wind would start blowing Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to blow the grass off the, off the parking lot into the other grass. And it's the wind. Every time I turn directions, the wind would change directions and blow directly opposite me. So I'm trying to blow this stuff onto the (laughs) grass and it's blowing it back at me. I'm like, Oh my gosh. I heard that. Did you have like a, like a handheld one or is it backpack? It was backpack. I've heard okay. that pulling out the uh, the the blower angers the wind gods. So it does. It very much does. They're like, <laughs> "How dare you blow when I can?" Man, <laughs> I was working at, at when I was working at Price Chopper one winter, or I guess the only winter I was really there for. I guess I was outside getting carts, and it's snowing, not heavily, but enough. You know, it's it's definitely snowing, and I'm grabbing carts, and I see <laughs> the snow in front of me go forwards do a somersault and come directly back into my face and i was like <laughs> somersault i looked up and you i was like winter salt <laughs> <laughs> a winter pepper i looked up and i was like what have i done to deserve this who did i anger this doesn't make sense it was so uh, uh. Dude, oh you know what funny freaking story as we as we draw to a as we're you know coming up on our closing what we, there was there was a tornado <laughs> oh yeah and it had we were like what we constantly it was me and the store director were constantly i mean because i was up a customer service and had access to a computer we were constantly watching the weather i was looking out sure, like, i was at a register where i could see outside so i'm just looking at the clouds yeah like, that's not so good. i mean <laughs> yeah no it was it, i mean you could tell it was gonna come the store like, was pretty dead too point. so i think at one point i walked outside just to look around yeah, so we're like keeping an eye on the weather, and we get new like we're listening to the news and stuff. We get to, get word that it touched down just a few miles away, so we're like, okay, we got to get everybody into the freezer in the back. We got to shut down the store and all this stuff. Mm. So there was like maybe five customers in the store, so we get them and all the employees in the back. Get into help the, on the, the intercom and be like, tornado. No, yeah, no, we did. Yeah, we're like, okay, attention everybody. Like, if you would make your way back to produce, and then have an employee will escort you back to the freezer, so we can you know keep everybody safe. Mm. And so while we're back there. And I, I briefly ran up to help the managers get a few things back. And then uh, most of us went back. The store director stayed at the door to make sure, you know, like to keep an eye on things, to make sure everybody was back there and all that stuff. And he, the, he hears a banging. He looks, and there's a, there's a lady knocking on the door uh, that we had already <laughs> locked. And we're like, what the heck is she doing here? And he's like, lady, or he's like, ma'am, there's a tornado. You need to get to cover. And she's like, I know, but I just need to send a fax. And we're like... <laughs> What? <laughs> do you even have you? Can you do that? At a price no. Shopper? Okay. So we <laughs> we used to be able to. We have a fax machine, but they they eventually stopped that because it was just too much of a painful. It's process the new it age. Took forever. Well, no. It just it took for freaking ever, and so like we just and eventually stopped it. And at that point, we had stopped sending faxes. So we're like, this lady is like braving a tornado <laughs> just to send a freaking fax, and we're like, what the heck important. are you doing? Apparently, I think it's worth your life. One of the the one of the smartest things I ever did at Price Shopper was I was closing with my coworker, and you know, it's like ten thirty at night. Store's completely empty. You know, I already did all of my nightly chores that I would need to do, so I'm just kind of walking around the front. You know, if someone walks in, you know, say hello to them, and then go man my register and get ready for when they come up. Cause they're probably only gonna grab like two items coming in that late. They're not going to full on shop, but we were hanging out by the front door and we were looking out into the parking lot and there's a dude out there. I don't <laughs> know if you, if he had like a shopping cart or if he was just walking around, but we like opened the door. Like we walked to so, like the sliding doors would open. We like went over there and like, we're just kind of like watching him make sure he wasn't like doing anything wrong. And he like looked over at us took a couple steps towards us and I was like he was like I'll kill you you beep beep I'm gonna beep and we just looked at each other and we said nope we closed the doors locked them <laughs> we were like that's that's enough of that <laughs> that's gonna there, be a nope for me dog dude, there are some weird characters it around was, Price Shopper it, it was the funniest you, scariest thing that ever happened to me <laughs> at Price Shopper <laughs> there used to be a guy who would hang around the store at 5 30 every morning and when we opened at like we opened the doors at six so he mm-hmm. would hang around at 5 30 every morning round up all the carts for us and put them in a line next to the door so all you do is push them in and oh, he was nice. always he was well no here's the thing he was always high as balls <laughs> and so he would he would do that and then he wouldn't push them in he would just leave them there and so we had to go out and push them in after he lined up I was like just leave them out in the crowd crowds. 
But then he would wander around the store, not buy anything. He would just wander around the store and start talking to people about how he was Jesus and that the dinosaurs were coming back and we all needed to watch out and us peasants needed to leave him alone. Dinosaurs. Yeah, no, I was like, bro, what the heck are you on? <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> Dude, that's Oh, crazy. my word. That, that guy uh, was just I weird. believe him. I believe him. <laughs> <laughs> I take everything that that man has said to heart. I think dinosaurs are coming back, and that he is like, Jesus. <laughs> there have been, they have made six movies now about dinosaurs coming back, and they never end well. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. hopefully dinosaurs don't come back. I remember uh, when <laughs> the first time that I was old enough to actually start registering Jurassic Park in my child brain. I would go to church and I'd be like, we have the wrong door handles. The raptors are going to open the church doors. And they're going to break in. <laughs> I was like, nowhere is safe. I would like find rooms that had like, like knobs instead of like handles. And I'd be like, this, <laughs> this is where, this is where I'm going to hide. <laughs> oh, jeez. It was time. <laughs> this isn't workplace related, but that reminds me of, the, um, have you, have you both, have, have you been to Disney world, David? No, uh, not yet. Okay. So there's, there's a dinosaur ride there that's basically like they're they're, they're kind of like oh, Universal may own Jurassic Park, but we can have plenty of fun with dinosaurs too. Check this out. And it's the, <laughs> the premise is you're in this like time traveling Jeep and you have to go back and grab like a dinosaur from the Cretaceous period or whatever and then bring it back to study. And so in, in the like combination lobby gift shop area there's a set of monitors mounted on the ceiling and they're, they're like fake security cameras and one of them shows the hallway that's like right through a door that's right near these these monitors and it's like puts this like fake cgi dinosaur that's like coming down the hallway right Foxy. through the door and it's about to come into the room and i when i was a kid my parents took me and my sister there they didn't take us on the ride though like my dad would stand with us in the lobby and wait for my mom to do the ride, and then he would go in and mom would wait with us, you know? Yeah. Uh, because we weren't old enough. And and I was, like, looking at that monitor, and I'd be like, Dad, we gotta go! The dinosaur's right there! We gotta get out of here right now, dude! <laughs> uh, apologies, yeah, headphone yeah. users. <laughs> yeah, that sounds it sounds like something I would do. Oh, yeah, and it's, you know, I recently went back there in, like, 20, 2021. And uh, it's, it's a pretty enjoyable ride when you're an adult who doesn't crap their pants. <laughs> when the security camera footage is still there. Oh, yeah. And the, the <laughs> monitors are, like, ancient, dude. It's hilarious how old everything is there. But it's, 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 so great. Funny. it's great. It's great. It's great. CGI looks super fake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It totally looks goofy. But, but you, 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 you know, you got it. When you're old enough, you admire and appreciate the charm. It's true. Absolutely. Um, so I think it is time for us to close off this episode. Oh man! Um, but I, had I know. Another job. Sad. We're coming to the end of our. Wait, hang first... on! You got still ten minutes. No. Yeah. No. no we don't. Totes. Totes, my goats, no. dude. We even no. started ten minutes early. Give me this. Give me this. It's my birthday. No. We're Technically, we started now, three minutes early. All right. Yes. It's still, we're, it's my birthday. We're ending it now. It's I don't. I don't still... care. Um, it is. <laughs> how, yeah. Actually, happy birthday, Jake. I would say yeah, to you, thanks. but I really don't want to. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> Screw you. How how old are you? <laughs> Twenty four. I tell 24? you congratulations, nice. but that's horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're old. Ah, uh, I know. <laughs> You're very old. <laughs> um no, seriously, oh. let's 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 draw this to an end. Um the very first of our double digit episodes. Yes. Um Man, holy crap. So this is a legendary 10, right? story. So oh my goodness. Hold on. We are three away. For after today, we are two episodes away after this from reach, reaching our one year mark. Woo! I, it's incredible. That's exciting, guys. I, actually, I know. I can't believe we've actually. Made I it this actually far. forgot to mention to our 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 dear listeners that I have just recently joined the ranks of adulthood. Oh, oh yeah. that's true. I just right. had my 18th birthday. Like, you know, happy you birthday, little boy. Thank you. I guess you're not like, a little boy anymore, though. <laughs> exactly two weeks ago, actually. Dang, he can't use that little boy oil anymore. I know. Uh. <laughs> this is sad. If you don't know what that's from, go check out our YouTube channel, Quinterco, where you may or may not watch these videos, and go watch the Donut Maker video. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go check out Selfless, the YouTube channel. It's a shameless self-promotion. It's us. Dude, it's our... Yeah, <laughs> we can promote ourselves I know, I know. I'm just trying to provide people with context. 
That uh, that's why I said self. <laughs> um, because it's us. <laughs> well, you have to start promoting from somewhere. You got to start yourself. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm just sad I couldn't tell you guys about the whole, you know, uh, horrible poop explosion story. <laughs> All right, now I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I mentioned poop, and I just well, got, I kind of have to you know, build up to it, though, so you might have to buckle in. It's fine. We have 10 minutes. <laughs> got, yeah, Mr. Incredible. Yeah, I got time. <laughs> so uh, after, after I was uh, unfairly terminated for power play, I sat down and was like, well, you know, I need another job because uh, money. So I was like, hey, um... The YMCA exists, and rumor has it, it might even be a fun place to stay at. So, <laughs> also, I think I'll send an application to them and see what's what. <coughs> and I ended up getting a job working in before and after school care. The, uh, you know, the Y Club, the Y Care. Uh, basically, yeah. it's where your kids go when you still have a day job to work, and you can't pick them up right when school gets out. So, uh, it was from 3 to 6 every weekday. During the school year and during the summer, we would run uh, summer day camps, which, I, you know, I, at, until that point, I'd never really thought about it. But, like, if you're if you're a kid who has both parents with a full-time job, like, n- neither neither parent is a stay-at-home parent, you you don't really get a break from school because uh, we operated our summer camps in the schools. And, like, ah. if there was a snow day, guess what? You came to the school where we had white cars. <laughs> You never got you never got to stay home. It was it's kind of sad, but you know what? Such is life. Anyway, um, I so the the poop explosion story, right? So this actually <laughs> takes place during summer camp, and uh, so part of part of like what we did like three two or three times a week is we would we would take all all the kids, pile them into a bus, and uh, bring them bring them to the local pool for some swim time, and uh. One such time, we had just gotten back from from that, and where every every time we like get get to a location or we're about to leave for somewhere, and frequently during the day, you know, we have everyone stop by the bathroom because they're children and they don't have complete control of their bladders. So yeah. we <clears throat> we just got back to the building. We have everyone line up and go in the bathroom. And have you guys seen Daddy Daycare? Yes. yes. <laughs> so yes. one of the <laughs> one of the kids comes up to me and's like, "Hey, uh, <laughs> Mr. Jake." I was like, "Yeah, what's up, man?" He's like, "I, I, uh, I was in the bathroom and I, uh, I missed. <laughs> I, I kind of missed." <laughs> I was like, uh, <clears throat> "And I know he's he's too young to have, way too young to have seen the movie. It, like, came out before he was even born." I'm like, <clears throat> "I'm gonna need you to, uh, to uh, elaborate, my good." What sir, do you mean by that, child, sir? <laughs> Yeah, what do you what, what do you mean? What do you mean you missed? I missed. <laughs> I was like, um, what? Uh, you wanna? He's like, there's a, you know, I tried to, I, I, uh, I pooped my pants, and I was trying to get it from my pants into the toilet, and it, I, it fell on the floor, you know, I, and I need help, and I was like, okay, all right, and he, and like this was he, you know what? Actually, he, and it wasn't like he came up to me and said he was like calling out from the bathroom. Help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so i uh, like i clear all the rest of the kids out and i go get my my boss and i'm like listen i i don't know exactly what's happening in there but it, it sounds like a pretty uh a fecal fiasco is going down so <laughs> fecal fiasco. so he's like all right all right uh we're gonna we're gonna figure this out and the thing about uh minors in the bathrooms is that they you know you can't really you can't go into the bathrooms even when there's not children in there you can't just go into the restrooms at an elementary school even if you work yeah. there it's just yeah it's, you know yeah there's issues there there's faculty so, restrooms for so what restrooms. i had to do is i like stood in the doorway and then and only then was my boss able to like you know walk in there because i've got he's got me as the eyewitness that can verify that he didn't touch children where they shouldn't be touched <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he goes in there and there's like poop everywhere it's on the walls it's on the toilet <laughs> it's it's on the floor it's on the kid and uh so he you know he helps the kid clean himself up um i you know i don't know where but somehow he had to came prepared with a fresh change of clothes and so the kid gets cleaned up and walks it out and he's he's just in socks at this point because the poop was also on his shoes <laughs> and, and uh 
<laughs> at this point, I like crush down to look under the stalls because I'm just I'm just curious at how bad it is because it smells oh. awful as well. And I just see this like it's like a a softball sized ball of poop on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sitting there by the toilet. I'm like, oh, oh no, that's so and, gross. And, and so my boss comes back out and he's like, all right, we we need get the janitor. This is a, this is a uh, a class A emergency situation. Uh, a got a code brown. Size, <laughs> <a> softball <laughs> size. <laughs> it was huge, man. For does, for a kid that how little, does kid, little kid man is this. Like he was no older than second grade. He was he was small. He was a small boy. <laughs> And uh, so the the janitor comes and he puts this like scissor wall thing across the the, the entryway to the boys' room. Yeah, and like so a I, Home Depot. I, I, yeah, yeah, and I but except they like went all, all the way up to the ceiling, and mm. I put a I put a sign on there that said, "Warning: Do not enter. Biohazard." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, that's hilarious. good good times. That reminds good me. Good times. What? Uh... Man, I don't know, Brian. Were you were were you guys there with us? It might have been one of the youth group outings to the lake, and there was like, you know, the little shack at Hillsdale where there's like two bathrooms. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Was uh, there... <laughs> is it not by the marina? It's like by it... the entrance to the marina, like the down the gang, like at the beginning of the gangplank. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we went in there, and there was like. A massive turd on the seat, and then like another <laughs> massive turd on the floor. That was like, <laughs> it was huge, and it was just like there was like one paper towel over the top of the one on the seat, and the one on the floor was just left completely alone. It was ah, uh, it was horrible. The, uh, there's, I don't think we ever nailed down who it was, but there was some <laughs> some employee at Price Chopper that couldn't go to the bathroom on a normal toilet seat they had to have i don't i don't know if they have like cushioned toilet seats at their home or whatever but they would they would take <laughs> almost they would use almost an entire roll of toilet paper just to <laughs> pad it like to put toilet paper on the seat to pad in the seat oh. as they and then like so we never nailed down who it was but every once in a while you'd go in the bathroom and there'd be like two inches worth of toilet paper just around the toilet seat the and you're like, dude, I, I can't. It's like, yeah, we can't flush that. So it's like, let me go grab gloves so we can pick it up and like throw it in a bag. Did you guys uh, like, uh, hear the story of the Burger King boo boo bomb? Yes. <laughs> what? No. Cameron. Oh my word. <laughs> Hold on, Nina. You have to tell it now. Oh. Uh, Brian, why don't you take it away? I don't remember the details. So, I just remember. I vaguely remember it, but it, it was we, gross. It was like a youth group outing or something, and we went to Burger King and. Uh, Cameron went to go use the bathroom and as he was going in an old man's coming out and there is um, feces all along this old man's pant leg and oh. <laughs> Cameron is startled goes into the bathroom checks the stall and there's just poop everywhere all <laughs> over the place it's like literally the toilet like regurgitated all of the poop and just like splattered it on everything Oh, he comes back out like he just saw a ghost and was like, <laughs> we had, "Dude, we had we had an old man complain to us at customer service because we had put a closed sign on one of the on one of the stalls because the the toilet wouldn't flush like if something was busted in there and it wouldn't flush so it was filled to the brim with crap and water." And like, if you put anything in there, it was overflowing. And Aww. he he freaking got in there and sat down. He he pushed through the closed sign, saw the water there, and decided, hey, I'm going to sit down and use this. And then complained to us because he, as he sat down, it overflowed and got water oh. all over his pants and stuff. Dude, oh, can you imagine no. d dipping and your he, balls he, in the poopy yeah? But water. then it's like, yeah. Then he decided to come up with a plane and like want to talk to corporate because it's so gross. And we're like, dude, we had a closed sign there for a reason. We're waiting on a plumber. Like what do you, what do you want us to do? You sat down, you saw the water and thought, I'm going to sit down in this. It's one thing taking a poop and having the water splash you up and you know lightly caress you, but I can't imagine Poseidon's just, kiss. Yeah, full yeah, on just, just like dipping myself dipping, in the poop. Dipping your nuts in somebody else's poop water. Like. <laughs> oh, I hope your I hope your balls don't have taste buds because that's gross. <laughs> Uh, uh, did you guys ever have an employee like say something really like stupid to your boss that like 
like, oh, you shouldn't have said that. Like a coworker. We have, but I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah, it was I this, I... this little old lady named Phyllis. <laughs> oh. The most, one of the most troublesome workers I've ever had. She just, she didn't give a crap about anything. Didn't she like tell off one of the managers at one point? Oh, multiple times. And she, I mean, do, okay, so Herd. Do you remember Herd? Yeah. Herd, Herd the Turd? Yep. The, um, <laughs> Amber, Amber Turd. <laughs> yeah, so no, Herd, Herd the Turd was, uh, he was the district manager for us. I mean, I, uh, Turd was his nickname, but I actually, I, I liked him. He was a good guy. But he came in one day, you know, just to do a routine check, and she complained to him for 20 minutes about the fact that she only got one polo and they charge you $24 for any extra employee to- polos. And it's ridiculous that they like 20 freaking minutes about how she should get a free, an extra free employee shirt. Cause she has to do laundry every day and she can't go home and, you know, like not have a shirt for work. And we're like, dude, what the heck is like, really? So he finally came up to us. He's like, just give her an extra shirt. He's like, I don't care. Like, I'm not going to sit here and listen to this all day long. And she's mm. she's in her late sixties, yeah. and we had to hear about how when she gets home, she doesn't even wait until she's in the door to start undressing. She's already half naked by the time she walks in her door. So her, her neighbors are all, and she works. She lives in an apartment complex, so all of her neighbors are just watching her walk like half naked into her door. I'm like, dude, that's gross. What the <laughs> heck? <do you> do? <laughs> Relax. Oh, <laughs> uh, the the very first woman I worked under at the YMCA, she was this. She was a <sighs> sassy fat chicagoan but she was a good woman as long as you didn't you know get on her bad side and she ruled the kids with an iron fist and (laughs) the she was the site director and the assistant site director that poor girl bless her heart she was the little challenge in the social socialization department if you will Mm -hmm. and she one day we're like you know all the kids have gone and we're 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 putting everything away in our little closet we have in the cafeteria. And she's like, she turns to her boss and goes, hey, uh, did you know you have RBF? <laughs> I'm, over, I'm over in the corner trying not to lose it laughing, like shedding a tear. Because <laughs> why would you ever say that to anyone? <laughs> but it is true, too. <laughs> oh, my word. And then my oh. boss just turned in and is like, you... Uh, yeah, you're lucky I'm a nice person. Never, <laughs> you should never ever say that to anyone ever. <laughs> uh, never we say had that a, again. Two of, two of our deli manager or yeah, uh, two of our deli managers in a row. Classy. They they both had that, and it was bad. I mean, you could uh, they one of them always had a bad day. The other one is just there. <laughs> All right. She, I mean, she was a nice lady, but it was just there. Grand it finale. Is... Oh, what? sorry. Grand finale, because we uh, got to wrap this up. Final story. Is, yeah, I'm ready. No, it's... So this is actually also bathroom related and even crazier than the poop ball story, no in my opinion, anyway. So Nothing the following that. school year, after the summer during which the poop ball incident occurred, I had actually been transferred to another site due to some uh, issues with the fat Chicagoan. She was a notoriously hard to work with person. Actually, it's <clears throat> I don't want to talk about it anyway. Uh. I'm at this new site, and uh, one of the one of the kids we get uh, in, a little way into the school year is like very, very much, uh, you know, special, right? More in a behavioral way, and not in, uh, rather than like an in, uh, intellectual way. Mm-hmm. Like it became pretty clear, and eventually we had to dismiss him from the program because we were just not equipped to accommodate his needs. But before before it came to that, before we brought the band hammer down on him, uh, he 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 did all kinds of crazy stuff. Like multiple times, he would just take off running into the like we we mainly stayed in the gym and the cafeteria, so he would just run in, into the hallways through the rest of the building, and I would have to pursue him and hunt him down because you can't just lose a child. That's terrible. Yep. And uh, so one day we're all lined up at the bathrooms, uh, right at the beginning of the of the Y Club day. And I, uh, you know, I notice he's taking a particularly long time, as he usually does, but it's even longer this time. And he's also, he's been really quiet. And Mm -hmm. once again, I'm standing in the doorway because, A, there's a camera right there. And also I have a coworker, like, meters away, not very far at all. And so I've got the, I know I only have the door cracked. And so I, like, stick my head in there. 
kind of, and I'm like, hey, uh, is everything going all right in there? You've been in there a while, and we 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 need to get going. There are other people that are waiting to use the restroom, and he, <clears throat> oh man, <laughs> PTSD. He comes out mm. of the stall wearing nothing at all, and I'm horrified because, like, you know, he's a minor. Yeah, and that's that's like the opposite of what you want to see a kid doing is being naked. <laughs> so, oh, and, so he comes out and he's wearing nothing at all, and he, we lock eyes, and I'm like, <laughs> no, and he he charges at me, so I <laughs> slam the door shut, and he's trying to get out and run around the building naked, and I'm pulling this door to the bathroom he pin char- closed. Oh. He charges because he at just, me. I was like, he can't get out. He he cannot. I cannot allow him to run around naked. I like turn to my coworker. I'm like, hey, can you get go get the boss? We got a bit of a situation going down over here. <laughs> You lost the kid. Oh I need, I need to bring in the negotiator. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that's so I can bad. just picture that. The the locking eyes, the silence, and then just him just start running, and you're like, ah! <laughs> it's like, oh, oh crap, game, dude. <laughs> oh, oh my yeah. My, my, like, and we, it's not like, and it was like a thick metal door, too, so we could barely hear each other through it. So we had to, like, very carefully, while still holding it closed, crack it open to talk to the kid and try to get it to put his clothes back on is insane uh i feel so bad for his dad because he was such a nice guy and he was like super willing to do whatever it took to get him into like you know the personal success plans or whatever and you know get him the help he needed but just we couldn't we couldn't accommodate it. we couldn't handle him uh, he's too much for the yfca <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, all from right the wild, with- bro with the ending of that story it is time to end this episode indeed and yes um, yes this has been episode 10 uh once again thanks to sebastian for coming onto the show i know he's mm-hmm. not in the here and now but uh i have no doubt that he probably came back hopefully to listen to it maybe please do it uh <laughs> anyway and uh, if, be if sure you... to subscribe that click button and uh <laughs> we'll see you in the what? next one <laughs> if you have made it all the way to the end of this episode either all at once or progressively over the the days or hours uh we appreciate you thank you yeah yes um if this is your first episode welcome um if it's not thank you <laughs> for coming the, back this um, isn't the time to say welcome brian <laughs> well yeah. i mean you <laughs> never 10 know episodes <laughs> in. here's to another 10 so more. the way it's yeah. the way it's like listed on spotify some people if they have it listed um newest episode top or latest episode on the top or first episode on top it just sometimes you might click on the latest episode anyways but you can change that or also scroll just saying you can yeah you can yeah um so anyways thank you guys for joining us again uh we will see you next month <laughs> yes Bye-bye. bye bye oh where did my cursor go Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of the Time Capsule Podcast. Our intro music, as always, is Rareness of Existence by Ader Da Silva. And our outro music is Chill Hot Main by Zachar Balaha. We want to thank each and every one of you guys for listening today. And we also want to give a special thank you to Sebastian for joining us on today's special episode of our number 10. As we come to the end of the year, we're looking forward to all of the exciting stuff we have planned for you guys throughout the next year. And we cannot wait for you guys to listen to it. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. It's Quinterkel. We do have a couple cooking videos up for you. Go give those a look. We hope you enjoy them. Thank you for joining us.